afternoon everyone, I'll just jump in momentarily whilst John soon to cook. That's a quick breather, it's been, it's been going pretty solidly for about ooh, five, hours, five, five hours, hours so far, so even the voice needs a break at some point. Witness of the Black Ball shootout. Baden giving us his trademark. Come on! I think Dean might have been hoping for a snooker on that last shot, but it's given Healy a chance, and he's just played that pretty wayward. Potted Dean's ball, so it gives him the ball in hand. And what's Dean going to do with this free shot? Just develop that red. Apologies, folks. Thankfully, I haven't missed a hell of a lot. Although Dean Garnett very much onto a clearance here. Just needs a red, red and the black for the first game of the first set. And Dean got through Danny Bowen in his first round match, and he only needed a black ball shootout to defeat Adam Shaw. So. That's how both players have gotten to this point. It's quite contrasting styles of play actually. Healy's a more attacking player and Dean a more defensive style player, but Dean very much onto the offensive in that frame. So one game to nil he leads. Nothing quite beats the excitement of that that black ball shootout, though. You're thinking of things that are more exciting than just seeing players have to pot the black, basically, to win the frame, and not in the traditional sense. And any of you who watch a lot of football, for example, will know that the penalty shootout is probably harder to watch than anything else well especially if you happen to be an England fan dare I say it but watching the black watching the black ball shootout the one that we just saw there um, for a pole player is very much the same thing it's basically you must you must make it or you risk you risk not not getting another opportunity. It's like if you miss you miss the penalty in football, you may not ever get a chance to win the penalty shootout. So I've got four games on the go at the moment as Dean picks up where he left off in the first frame. Um, this match and then Kerry Wurtz versus Des Blair. 
Denny Bowen against Adam Shaw. Adam is one set to nil up ahead. Um, no set score yet in Kerry and Dez's game. And then you've got Shaden McKenzie against Neil Wally. Neil currently one nil ahead. So, so Danny Bowen, Adam Shaw, Shaden McKenzie, and Neil Wally, they're all in the loser round one because they lost their first round matches. Um, Baden won the shootout 4-2, Brad. So he is in the winner's round two. Well, sorry, winner's round one. And he will play Simon Singleton next at roughly 4.30. And Brent will play against Michael Hayes at about 4.30 in the loser round one. So that's what happened Brad and I tell you what it was it was really exciting to watch too much like as I said before a penalty shootout in football this is excellent intent here from Dean they're very much on to clear then he will go for it but if they're not then he'll just strangle the life out of you that is the sort of game that he plays. He does like to... He is a defensive beast, as one person put it, but when they are, are on to clear, he is able to flip the switch quite quickly and go from that defensive mode into attacking and the ability to finish. Hello to you too, Brad. Good to have you back. So Dean and Healy having won their first game, that's the winner round one. You can see that at the bottom of your screen. Kerry Wurtz and Des Blair are also winners in their first game, or the round of 16, so they are also winner round one. Um, Des Wilcox versus Adam Lilly and Baden Jackson versus Simon Singleton, both to go at 4.30 are your other winner round one games. Is that going to make a rail? No, it will not. So that will be a foul. So Dean will no doubt have that in hand because why would you want to play it from there? Jeremiah Tate sending through a message for Healy or a message of support. And the other two games in loser round one are Steve Alderson versus KD Singh and Brent Wells versus Mike Hayes so those two games will also go on at 4.30 it doesn't really matter too much that Dean didn't pot that ball because he did have a free shot the only worry will be the fact that it's perhaps made that pocket a little harder than it could have been so now having to be very careful with where he winds up with the cue ball here and then having to make sure he avoids the yellow on the way out so we'll finally get a chance to actually speak to somebody other than myself and Paul and Brent Wells, welcome to the commentary box. Thank you, John. The voice, always a pleasure to be here for New Zealand. Um, how many viewers have we got today? 45 at the moment. 45, and is it uh, Healy and Dean Garnett? Well, I know a bit about this Dean Garnett guy. I guess, uh, like, obviously he's a top-class player from England, like most of these guys are. Um, lucky enough that he... he been my partner for the last few years so he'll be he's a handful for anyone to beat um, of course we all know what who Healy is um, Healy Healy's a fantastic curse so this should be a really good game um, Dean will play the he'll play the game how it's supposed to be played and Healy might do too but I think Healy is uh, the, the better part of the two round two don't they losing one 2-0 to Dean. Who's the break? Do you know the yep. break? Indeed. Um, Toddy for NZBSA. Now, um, 
the players in the winners round one, if they, the player who loses will go into the loser round two, um, yeah, essentially you get a second bite at it. If you keep winning up until a certain point, um, which I believe is winner qualification, I think, think that anyway, then you get, you've got two bites at it. If you, once you lose, then if you lose again, you're out. But if you keep winning up until about, I think it's the, either the quarter or the semi, then you've still got that second life. I believe once you get to the semi-final, uh, that's it, I think. Um, once you get back to the semi-final, everyone loses their life and then it's just a shootout from there. Yeah. So hello, hello, Brad Campbell and Jeremiah Tate. Sorry, Brad, I was trying to ring you back. Um, but the voice uh, grabbed me and wants a bit of commentary. So, mm -hmm. uh, hey, nice to see you guys here watching. Uh, hopefully see you um, back here one day, Brad Campbell. Um, but thanks for the yeah it's not a real comeback unless you actually come back <laughs> so well, yeah. you, you did everything but though didn't you yeah I, I, well I'll tell you what, at the start I, I don't know who that was playing but at the end I, I was playing probably some of my better pool and um, Baden did really well to go to the shootout really he was 2-1 down he, and he had a real hard second to last ball I was right behind it was only on by a millimetre but the class that he is um, potted up, cleared up, and as you say, the rest is history. Indeed. Hence, while I'm here uh, with the voice. Yeah, it goes in the box. Mind you, if you'd won that game, you'd still be here anyway. You don't play straight away. Um, it just depends right. on what frame right. of mind you come to me in. Yeah. Well, it was a good game, and I was happy I came back. Um, hopefully, New Zealand was happy I came back because. It was looking like it was going to be a 3 0 disaster. It, it was, to be honest. I and, was thinking, yeah. oh, this is just going to be a walkover. But no, um, mm. I mean, I know. it back nicely from where you were. And yeah. All you got to do is keep your head up if you're down, you know. Just keep believing in yourself. Keep knocking on the door, and one day it'll open, you know. But yeah, I'm starting to like these new rules, and uh, I'm actually starting to like the little white. So, yeah. Cut the ears, I might be all good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it never was something that you were really into, was it? The, the small white. You no. were always on this game with the regular two-inch white. That was what you were really after, wasn't it? Yeah. But then yeah. more practice with the small cue ball because they weren't, they weren't going to change it, so you, you kind of had to adapt to it. Absolutely, absolutely. There's a couple right. of reasons why I don't play this particular game. One of them is because I haven't gotten used to the small cue ball but the other one is just time. Just don't have enough time to commit to this game and and the other one CNZ yeah. as well. Fair enough. There was a good shot there by Healy just uh, covering up that hole so that Houdini is going to have to come up with some magic to clear that one. So what's what's Healy's nickname? Um just trying to remember actually the brother, hustler hey brother Brad I was looking at a photo today of our our money match and I saw your nickname was the butterfly, the butterfly. where did yeah. that come from bro <laughs> well Brad? Haley's nickname the hustler oh the hustler oh, yeah that suits him I could see him hustling a few people in the day well Dean's trying to do what Dean does and um, not cover the holes because that's, that's all part of the game but Probably from there it wasn't worth it because no. if he'd got it all wrong he would have basically given the frame away but yeah. putting it there it's still a chance to wedge yeah. in. Yeah. So it, if anything it gives Healy a, just a false makes, sense that he's got to get on with it. Just makes him think, you know, I think he's got enough room to cut that, that yellow one that's over the hole and then split those other ones out. Just He might be able to do it now. It's an interesting way Healy played that last shot, isn't it? He's pretty he probably, much on yeah. the rail. It's not easy to cue with a small cue ball. No. no, I can vouch for that. I've had many a miss cue off the rail, which is why I now use a tip that overhangs. <laughs> and I must say, it makes a huge difference. Julie Alderson, who is Stumpy Alderson's um, brother-in-law, uh, sorry, sister-in-law and Gary Alderson's mm. wife. Oh, yep, yep. Thank you, Julie. 
Um, yeah, it was a bit of a, a shame I didn't uh, notice. Did you notice on the right hand side I was no good? So, um, yeah, left hand side was good, but the right hand side was no good. But Baden, he, he was just too clinical. Well, um, if he, if he pops sure, them all, yeah. he can't lose, can he? I was thinking to myself, John, that um, I mean, I'm, I'm all for this shootout, but I think with five shots each, you'll probably find that playing one last frame is going to take less time. Than playing the shootout. Than playing the shootout. What do you reckon? Five shots each. Whew. I like the shootout I actually like because it adds more drama. It does. Because, and also it's a skill based, just like winning a frame of ball, it's skill based. Yeah. You have to be good enough to pop the black up to five times under pressure. Yeah. That's what Healy played there, it was a perfect example of uh, where Healy clue. It looks like he's queuing to the side of the white. And then when yeah, he and hits. Then he Correct when he actually strokes through. Yeah, he, he hits it in the middle, which is very similar oh, to Gary. Okay. Very similar to that um, Judd Trump, and he's not a bad player. Well, but Judd but Trump initially feathers to the side. Yeah, yeah. So I don't recommend it, but those two obviously have the talent to get away with it. That's a great shot from Dean because he's left himself a second ball that he can wedge in behind the yellow. Yeah. So again, this could be, this could be an attacking Healy. shot from Hilly. Yeah. Um, oh no, he's decided to. Uh, he tried to block that route off, but it's still yeah. there. He wanted that ideally on or right near the rail, the, the top rail there. Now, for all those watching, if you ever want to know what to do in this situation, you're about to see the man who knows exactly what to do. That's why they call him Houdini. Well, he's somebody referred to him as a defensive beast. Yeah. Couldn't be more right. Wow, look at that. He hasn't quite gotten in far enough though, has it? Mm -hmm. Hilly's no, he's got a chance here. He's got to execute though, this has to go in front. Oh, yeah, with these on cue tables though, I tell you what, it's hard to get that ball inside there. It might look like there's a gap there, but it closes pretty quick. And there we go. That's not a bad result though, because now the reds and yellows have essentially swapped positions and yeah. There's still, you still got that yellow that's over the other pocket, which is a good worker. And it also stops Dean from being able to lay a snooker up so easily. Yeah. I think he's going to pop this one and cut that ball down the rail. That's uh, or play a plant cut, maybe? Yeah, possibly. Oh. Because the thing you can do with a cut plant is that the second... Red can make a nuisance, nuisance of itself as well. There it is, the shot that we just said he's going to Probably. play. Uh, so good. And, and just, like, so just, good, like that, it? just like that, it's gone from Healy being in the prime position to to Dean, and that's why he's called Houdini, I guess. Well, he's able to magic always, himself yeah, out always, of yeah, blue, isn't he? Getting himself out of situations you just don't want to be in. Thank you, Gary James. Yep. It was a bit of hard luck, but that's sometimes you just got to take it on the chin. Mm -hmm. Good thing is, it's a two life system, so I'm still in. So I'm looking forward to my next game. He's trying to talk Dean into playing that red right over the hole there. He, wanted, he really wanted to bury that further in, though, didn't he? Mm. Relatively simple one cushion escape here. Stiggy Stardust, that would be Stiggy Taylor, wouldn't it? It is Diggy Teller. Thank you, my boat. Appreciate all those uh, lovely words. Got it. She, I'm not sure about that <coughs> though. Oh. If you can see this, if he, he can hit the side of the yellow there, the, the one in the cluster, the one closest to him. Looks screwy. Skill shot. Yeah, very much so. Now, well, swings back to Healy, you would say, depending on this shot. It's the first actual skill shot I've seen in this game that's not been from an open table. Mm. That's a great option. 
his, his option taking is brilliant, isn't it? I love how he's got the balls to pot them, but then he's got the stones to do stuff like that too. Yes, Dean's got an easy out here though. I think he's fully snookered, so he doesn't have to hit a cush. Um, you'll probably find that he might even try to sneak behind that red, or will he just try and hit it? Um, if he can sneak behind it, that would be brilliant. Yeah, I, I think. Knowing where the black is, he might not. Looks have like to he's going to play this with a bit of pace. Oh, that's unlo unlike Dean. To do that, yeah, that's one cushion no dear moment, that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, especially when it's one cushion, right? Like, always make sure you, you hit the ball first, you know. And yeah. there we go. Always left himself <laughs> a little it's bit of a fine tight, cut, but Hilly's actually pretty good at this. He's got to watch so. he doesn't go behind that other red. Oh, he's put a little bit side. Well, a lot of side on that, didn't he? he? He had to, but he's so good at doing it. That's why I wasn't worried. Definitely looking at 2-1 here, unless something drastically goes wrong. There we go. Healy 2, Dean 1. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's a best of 5. Wrong way around. And then a best of 5 sets, isn't it? Is it 2-2 two to, two to Dean, 1 to Healy? 2-1 to Dean. Oh, yeah, 2-1 to Dean. Yeah. Just, oh, there's Greg Canty uh, just relaxing. Come all the way down from uh, Hawera. Good old Nicky. This Where is he? Sorry. Enjoying the pool or is that his phone he's playing on there? I don't know. Oh, just sitting to the right of centre. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the background you see the legend Des Blair, um, Zane Bernard, and there's another legend there, Henry Prisk, all enjoying the pool, as, as I anyway. hope you guys are who are watching from so uh, the comfort of home. Forgive me for being a... An idiot, but who was he Henry Prisk in there? In that? He's the Hitman, that's his nickname. Uh, he's from City Club, or Foxton, but he's from the City Club. He's one of our main conveners up at the City Club for all our tournaments, um, and he does a fantastic job, as, as, as does most of the City Club crew. Um, it's good to see him down here. He came down to support me. Um, I gave him a bit of a scare in the first game, but uh, hopefully I can right the ship in the second game. Thank you, Steve Couple. Um, next, I think I have Michael Michael, Michael Hayes. Hayes. Yeah, Michael Hayes, a local here. It's amazing how many top players that you have at your club. It's City Club 2000 and Palmerston North. We have inherited a few from the Upper Hutt Club, to be honest. Um, it was just myself. So I think Dean used to play for Upper Hutt, didn't he? Uh, he's fr he's all the way from Havelock North in um, Hawke's Bay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He he plays. So he could have ideally played for. He could have played for Taradale as well. If he he, he could have, because he was my partner. The, the club that Baden plays for. Yeah, yeah. He used to be Baden's partner actually, but we we won't go into that. It's a bit of a story, and, and I end mm. up inheriting Houdini. So. Oh, nice. Just get it in the way. It just seems... It's his MO, isn't it? If there's no clearance, it's just make a nuisance of himself. But he, he does it so well, and the rules allow you to... Mm. A lot of scope to just be a pain. Here's another prime example. You see Healy's queuing to the side of the white, but then when he hits it, smack bang in the middle. Yeah, he's one of the only players I've known to actually do that. Yeah. Most players will cue the, will feather the same part of the cue ball that they wish to hit. Yeah. But Healy's obviously different. He always feathers up to the left, and then he cues where he's intending to kill it. I think he'd just be dribbling this one over the hole. Ugly frame, this isn't it? Yeah, but the balls aren't in a very good situation. Uh, but as I said, if you ever want anyone to play these sort of frames, it's Dean Houdini Garnett. I tell you, oh, that was completely unintentional. But, uh, but what these do very well, these frames, is that they showcase the roles extremely well and how different players adapt to different situations. Oh, that's brilliant. I love that. Eh? I love, I love how players can just see that shot straight up and take it. Ryan King just letting, letting us know there of uh, 
what Heli White has done on the snooker table. Yep. I heard you got your a little hundred the other day yourself there, Mr. King. Um, you guys are both obviously talented cueists and uh, yeah, forced, forced for anyone to play, actually. Hell yeah. I was yeah. actually wondering if you might be here supporting Dez, but obviously you've got your own stuff to do. Um, but it's good to actually see a lot of people who know each other on the chat and yeah. are friends with the players and... Because we've got such a good pool community here. Yeah, so is he going for, the, is he going for maybe a skill shot? Yeah. Well, he might just about got it too. Sort of tried. But. Um, also, just want to... Um, say while well, I remember um, in Z inside New Zealand Pole um, Alex Stones is the person who runs that he is also doing a stream in, at this tournament with his own commentary crew so if you wish to watch a different match um, I believe that I'm not sure which of the other games he's actually streaming oh, Danny Bowen Ooh. versus Adam Shaw there you go so Danny Bowen versus Adam Shaw will be streamed also, but on Alex's Inside New Zealand Pool page. So if you wish to watch that game, go onto Facebook, have a look at it. All right, just got to give himself a little bit of angle on. Um, the yellow to the left hand side of the table there to maybe the best shot would be the no oh, he's going to play Checking it now it now not too sure if this is the right shot because uh, he's got no angle to go into those other balls uh, i think safety's on mind here. Yeah. yeah yeah i think he just wanted to get rid of that so he could play a safety yeah, yeah. there you go even the most attacking players play with a safety every now and then he wanted that to be buried inside the second yellow though he's actually left in a shot here but what I like though is what Heli did is that that yellow down the other end of the table makes it a lot more difficult for Dean to just run away and play safe. Yeah, as you can see from sort that side that Dean side angle table, he, he wasn't quite snookered, was he? So you're yeah, right. I think Heli missed the trick there. Well, he did, but I can see exactly why he did what he did. Yeah. There we go. He's going for. Try to restrict them to one ball there. I think you can see that red towards the centre of the table though. Just to the right of the black spot. Yeah. So again, I mean that was a more difficult shot than the one he played before, but the, the result was the idea was the same. He was trying to restrict what Dean could do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame you're not here actually, Ryan. At least you're able to follow this on stream. Yeah. He's put out the word though, he's going to be at every event next year, so look out everybody. Rhino Ryan King is coming back. I'm just waiting for Lee Hildred to show up, because I know he'll be here at some point soon. Dinner at midnight, who would that be? Not sure, I'll sorry. I'll have the odd uh, KFC at midnight, but I don't know if it's dinner at midnight. <laughs> You've had lots of them at midnight. <laughs> You've won so much. Uh, I know, but one of these big ones one day might, you know, might come away. Just as I said, you got to just keep knocking. You know? You've got to keep giving yourself a chance, don't you? Yeah. Just like as you did against Baden, you didn't give it up. You always gave yourself a chance. Yeah. That was meant to go in front of that pocket where those yellows are. Oh. That's why he was so annoyed that he got a double kiss. Oh, that's right. He's playing... Yes, no, he did tell me what he was doing. He's playing with, I believe, Kimberly Cullen over there. Oh, yep, Masters, eh? Because he's actually my new... my um, peer, Going to be my peers partner for the Nationals this year. This is uh, Lee Hildred. Oh, 
that needed to get mm. up. That, but what another what role a technical been, match this is becoming. Yeah, but another roll and that would have been perfect. I'll sit right behind the red. Pick the bones mm. out of that heli. What's he got? The back, the back double and maybe kiss that other red out? And the black? Or what's he going for here? He's going to take the one that's closest to the rail. Oh, that's a good shot. Oh, look, look at this. He mm. didn't, didn't get on the the other one at the same end though, it was a, which is unfortunate, but at least he's left that first yellow in the way. Yeah. You see how it's in the way of those two balls, the red and the black? Yeah, no, that's good. Can we just nick off this one or bring it all the way down? Yeah. Oh, Cut that, it in. Just how about that? Who would have thought that was on? Get out of there. <laughs> Those cuts are actually easier with the smaller white ball. Mm. You, mm. you feel with a fine cut you actually have to hit it fatter than you think because of the smaller cue ball. But it actually makes the fine cut more possible. It sure does. Alright, he just got a few uh, options here. The back double. Still got to try and get on the black though. This will be a triple as well. Oh, the old oh, Hopawati. Hopawati double. <laughs> Good old Hopawati, eh? He's still a legend. Yeah, unfortunately for a lot of the wrong reasons. <laughs> Alright. This is Floodgate. Come on in, uh, Mr Houdini. This is Floodgate's well and truly opened, isn't it? Well, you could have a little crack at this one in the middle there and leave the white so it's behind that other red. Uh, that's covering the yellow. It's like a shot to nothing, but if it goes in... I can't see it's him stopping there. He's having a sneaky look at it now. off the left side of the thread and leave him snookered. That was yeah, and if it drops in, it drops in. You know? Well, it looks like... Oh, actually, that that, that one into the middle is probably on anyway, so he's got plenty of time to do that one. I was, I was looking at the left-hand side of the red that he was next oh, to. Yeah. I thought if he thins off the left edge of it... Sticks a cue ball behind it for a snooker. If he was looking for a snooker, I didn't see this one next, but there you go. You need to do more commentary then. Yeah. <laughs> so I see I, all of this. I, stuff I saw that one as, as the last one to get on the black, and, and like if you have a look where the white is now, I might be, I might have been right there because if you had a part of that last, look at that posse on the black. You normally you'd be right. Mm. Number of balls he could use to get on the black. Right, he looks like he could take the one to the middle now, though. I think that's it. Yep. Yeah. Having said that, though, he probably wants to take this one into the corner closest to the. Because wouldn't you want to play that one over the whole last to get on the black perfectly? Or is he just going to take this one? Just take this one and then. And then that one. Then he's going to have to try and get between the yellow and black maybe where if this was his last ball look how easy this shot was to get on the black uh, I think he goes two rails here bottom rail side rail yep. to spit, spit back out into the middle of the table yeah. there we go he's gonna have to go uh, in behind he might even have to play a bit of side on this because it doesn't look like the right angle he might have to check it up a bit what do you reckon oh yeah there it is yeah, a, you little, can see the check. a little bit of check is the check going to bounce though let's have a look Yep, the check bounced. Look at that. Who will, yep, that's why I thought he should have played that earlier. And the other one into the middle and the one over the hole to get on the black. Here we go, I'll talk to him about that later. Only you I can, will, only I can tell him because he's my partner. He'll say, yeah, <laughs> you were dead right, well, he? But I, I thought he went the right way. He just didn't get the position he wanted on the last red. He just he no. ran too far. Here we go, just like that. It is two all, set one. It's not a shootout, it's a one framer, but well, it, it's, it's still a... Well, like a shootout, because yeah. you, you need the set. Winner take all, isn't it? The yeah. set, yep. So you need the set, so you'll be playing for absolutely everything, so this frame will feel like a decider. Alright, I like these uh, one frame deciders, 
It's qu- they're quite good. Unless you, yeah. Are you thinking unless you lose? Unless you, <laughs> unless you're playing. <laughs> you, you always want to win three nil, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. All right, come on, Houdini, the big break. Nine didn't. ball cue to break he, with. Oh, he's got a ball in, but as you can see, not ideal, although the reds are there. The reds are there. Just one there next to the black spot. He's going to have to work out how he's going to get that one away. I'm looking at the red next to the yellow near the bolt line. I, I just think, wonder yeah. if that goes. looks like it oh, does yeah. go. That goes. That goes. Come on, Dino. He might even try to get just to dislodge that red here. That's next to the black spot. Oh, it's like I know. Like I'm, it's like I'm inside his head. But look at that. Yeah, well, that's what I would have thought You know, as well, that, that could have finished anywhere but there. And he would have been on a finish. That's, that, that's fine, I reckon. I think that's on. Well, for all those who know who then he's, he's a little bit shaky, crewing over a ball. And let's see if he's... Oh, no. Oh, as you can see, the old thumb shaking a bit. See? And there yeah. you go. Yeah, Lynn's an extra that degree just, that of that difficulty, just hard luck. doesn't I mean, it? He was so unlucky to finish there. It reminds me a lot about myself when I play these sort this with this little white that's got a mind of its own. See Camellia Cook there chucking some prayer hands up. Oh. I don't think that's going to help Camellia. <laughs> hey. Whatever, whatever gets you any through, prayers, I Any prayers are good prayer. Oh, Lynn's Franklin, g'day, brother. How are you? Oh, I, I was thinking about you the other day. I got some bad news. I flew down to Christchurch, and I put my. This is for a trip for young play, a trip for young players. Do not leave your power pack in your main bag and travel down to Christchurch, because when you open up your bag, you've got a lovely letter from the government saying that they're going to uh, destroy it. So, Linz, I've had. Oh, because you I've, can't carry it inside your. No, you can take it on board with you. Carry it. Yeah, on but the... I got away with it going down to Christchurch. But of course, Christchurch uh, obviously security here is a lot more intense. And Linz, I hate to say it, that uh, pack you gave me a few years ago now, it's ended its playing days. Um, it's gone to the bin. <laughs> Heartbroken. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I haven't actually travelled for some time, and when I saw open my bag and saw that letter, I was devastated. So. My apologies, Linz, but I have got really good use out of that power pack over the years. So has uh, everybody else, because they kept borrowing it off me anyway. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you ever want another one, I'll catch up with you when I'm the Naki next. So, Dean on reds. Yep, yep, Ryan's, so yep, Ryan, Ryan's on top. Yep, right. Uh, there's Dean is you, uh, we're using a new cue to break with. Um, I don't know what, what make or model it is, but as long as he pots balls, I guess that's all that matters. Yeah, well, that's essentially what he would have bought it for, right? The breaking cue. I don't see Dean playing a lot of nine balls, so... No. I don't actually right. foresee there being a lot of nine ball tables in Palmy either. None at all, actually. I know how much you used to love playing nine ball. Used to be one of the best in Oceania. Well, I am going to make a comeback next year. I've, I've said it I'm live on national national radio now or national live stream. Brother loves coming back to nine ball. I mean, I love that game, but I just we yeah, just don't, we don't have it. nowhere to play it. Um, but then, yeah, I might be getting an opportunity where I might even be getting a nine ball table. So you might have to exciting times ahead. Well, you might have to start the posh to get some in the Manawatu region. Yeah. Uh, it might be the same as yours, actually, Ryan. I, I have seen yours. Yours looks very similar. Uh, I mean, you put about five or six balls with yours, so... All right, big shot coming up. Off two cushions, maybe three. In and out of bulk. And lay perfectly up on the one into the corner. To, I, I do not think he can. I don't think he can hold the white for the one in the middle. So he looks like no. he's got the perfect angle. Uh, but always remember, you got to pop the ball, otherwise it's not your shot next. So let's see what he does. 
two or three cushions. There you go. That was the idea, wasn't it? You could see what he yeah. was trying to do. He's ended up, would have ended up woefully out of pause, but the intent yeah. was quite clear. It was, and uh, he just missed the pod because he, he's probably thinking too much about where the cue ball was going. Yeah. And he took his eye off the pot, and it's so easy to do that. Yeah, and it so often looks quite ugly when you miss them like that as well, but there's always a good reason behind it. I think Healy's got nothing to lose by playing that yellow onto his other yellow to the right of the red there because if it doesn't go in, Dean's ball is going to be pretty much covered. Um, but the thing is, yeah, if it, if it does go in, he's still going to be on a finish too, so that's what he's looking at there. If it doesn't go in, he wants to cover the hole. If it goes in, it could be happy days. Ooh, played it a bit harder than I would have. And left the red on. Yeah, he played it aggressively because he wanted to make sure he got a shot. Yeah. If he potted it, but that opened up the can of worms that it didn't cover the red. So, you know, it's a risk reward shot, and Healy obviously trends more towards the risk side of it. Yeah. I think, well, if Dean can get on that red into the corner after this one, it could be a good night I ring for the first set. Ooh, it's oh, travelling. Uh, it's travelling. It's travelling quite nicely. It is. It looks like the red next to the back. Does it go into the that goes, left it middle? It goes or? into the one on the right. I know that. The way, his, my body language says it goes into the other one as well. Well, well the side body view will give you a better idea. Oh, he's side got to keep that still. thumb steady. Look at that thumb go. Yeah, obviously it's on. And you couldn't ask for a better position than that. Yeah. No. Then all you have to do is play all If you want to have a, look, have a look at that side table, that's why we've got two tables for you guys to view. Can they see both? Yeah. Oh, yep. no. Yeah. Well, that sort of told you more than we could, that it was bang on. There you go. Dean Garden Dino. takes the first set. So the call of Dino from the crowd. <laughs> Very well liked as uh, young Dean. Well, not so young anymore. Um, and that's it. One one set to Dean. Long way to go, though. Long I was way still, to go. I was still laughing at the. Was laughing at the Camilla, rubber, Camilla, rubber Camilla, chances. Camilla found that quite funny. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> he, I was still laughing at the rubber chances he gave to the twenty oh, questions. Yeah. Mind you, he was oh, absolutely wait, 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 plastered. Time. What happened to my 20 questions? Um, did, I, did I get uh, phased out? Did you actually do it? Yeah, I did. Oh, the, it'll be up probably soon then. then it, uh, Jeez, ooh. you heard that. that the, whole, the whole room heard that break. That went uh, and off like and a I, shot. I think that's um, something to do with losing the first set. You put a little bit more into the, the first game of the next one. What do you reckon? And then, uh, oh, and then that happens. I'll tell you what, those on cue middles, you have to be right on your, on the money for those on cue middles. Well, that, means yeah, the table, yeah, that means the table's still open, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. you need to, yeah, after the break, if you put a ball on the break, you need to pot next to establish a set. The good thing, though, is that you can actually play one colour onto the other. Yeah. And the colour you've potted is the colour you know on. Oh, so see. it's not like C and Z where you have to play one set. Yeah. You can't put bigs on smalls, for example. Looks like he's slightly reds in this case. Straight in the middle. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Look at the the reds compared to the yellows. There's more yeah. open reds on the table. The one or two of them that. I'm looking at quite specifically at the one just past the middle on the right, and the, which he could actually get, have gotten on now, and the one next to the yellow to the right of the black spot. Those are going to be the two that cause the most headaches potentially, but he could very well halve that by playing and potting this red first yeah. to the middle. He's well, he's probably just going to drag it a little. No, nope, didn't even go for it. But he, for some reason, cleared that yellow for Healy. 
I don't quite understand that. Oh. Maybe it's just because of where the yellow is lying, but I, I, you wouldn't. I wouldn't say be that to Healy. Someone, no like, someone like Healy uh, make his job easier because Healy can make it easy anyway. I, I but, wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't leave a table like this and say to Healy, "Go on, see if you can pot them all." I, I, Dean must have had something else in mind, but. Very unlikely that he would have deliberately left us. Well, oh, he's just coming into the red and pushed it over towards the black a bit, so it makes it a little bit awkward now because uh, black's probably. Oh, there you go. Oh, there he Let's is. Get, he put it, it there into and he jail got it. and out of jail. Yep, that's it. Always thinking. Top this through. Kiss off the red. Oh, he wanted a bit more of a kiss than that. That's okay, you might be able to fade across for the other one down the rail. Perhaps. Looks like it's touching the rail too, so it sort of makes it a little bit easier if you just play it with a little bit of side, running side. Got under it. Got under it. Which is very possible with a small cue ball, would you believe, just to get under the ball like that. Especially with the side that he put on it. It's a, you it's still, when you put the side on it, you have to contact the rail ever so slightly before the ball yeah because then the side kicks, in. kicks off and hits the ball in the correct place to pot it yeah absolutely if you do that with a small cue ball and you haven't hit rail first Ooh. then you'll you'll chop at it like that i think there could be a snooker coming up here just yeah quietly. i just yeah i think so too somehow and there we go oh he I might think have the other yellow yeah, is on. The other yellow is on. Any other scores from around the traps? What do we got? Kerry Wirtz 2 0 over Des Blair. Is that sets or? Sets. Oh, they, yeah. They're all sets. Oh, yep. Kerry Wirtz is two this sets. This time he up does get it down the rail. What a shot. Over Des Blair. Um, Adam Shaw is two sets up on Daniel Bowen. Daniel, Danny the, the natural Bowen. Uh, Neil Wally is 2 0 up on Shaden McKenzie. There you go. Yeah, so Shaden's nicknamed the, the Milky Bar Kid. The Milky, I love it. I love it. Neil Wally, of course, the gentleman. Um, Adam is a sure thing, sure. A sure thing. Danny Bowen, somebody called him the natural because he doesn't practice. The natural. Well, he's nat naturally that good, apparently. If we could all be that good without practicing. There you go, who would have thought? that shot of Dean's would cost him the frame. Well, it's more the attempt at a snooker that didn't mm. go right. That's cost him the frame. Normally Dean's excellent at them, but... Left uh, Healy that, that sniff down the rail and... Uh... Healy only needed a sniff, didn't he? It was a good... Sh it was a brilliant shot, yeah, but Dean left him a chance to play that when he shouldn't have. And Dean's usually lights out with snookers and it wasn't his best work and Healy punished him for it. <laughs> Stumpy. There you go, Stumpy. And the pink shirt in the background there taking money. I don't know what that's before, for <laughs> drinks or. Uh, <laughs> probably can't say on, on uh, live stream, but he's probably just uh, getting some money for some beers or something. It's drink fun, surely. Go, dude goes through yeah. enough of them. Yeah. But we still love him for it. He's an absolute hoot. Thing to break. Ooh, nice sounding break. Oh, the cue ball got in the way. Cue ball got in the he way. He got robbed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. Nothing down. Open table, as they say. That rubbish in the middle of the table, that doesn't help. Because he would, would have wanted to see those reds, but he can't. So he has to go yellows. Takes a skill shot. Now... Des, Des was actually saying with this shot, it doesn't necessarily establish a set. Uh, it, not necessarily, it definitely doesn't establish a set. So it's still so an the open table. table. Is still open. He still gets the choice, of course. He does. Now, the, the it, point as they now say, uh, reds are in play. Is that Correct. what they say these days? Correct. Reds are in play. Get out of there! No, he's alright, he's alright. He's just still got to work out that other red down the end here. I thought for a moment he was going right behind that. I'm not sure if he'll try and pot this one, because you he, he just don't want to keep potting balls, because you get yourself in all sorts of strife. 
He's he um, must have got a mile there, didn't he? Look did. at what he's left Dean. No, it's not a long damn it. Adam Shaw, by the way, has beaten Danny Bowen 3-0, so three Danny is now nil, out. A, a record time. It's unfortunate for him because he's an absolute excitement machine, so to see him, at least to see him on stream would have been fantastic, but unfortunately that's not to be. Those of you watching Alex's stream would have seen him play. Dino is queuing it, queuing it well. He's going to be. He's, he's tough to beat in, in most games, but in the small white, very hard to beat. Clerk, no. Do you reckon he was trying to split that? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I was being. He might. I was being a bit sarcastic. You're being facetious. Facet, facet. That's too funny. Is that what it means? Facetious. I don't know. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it also but, uses all of the vowels in the English language in, in the right order. Facetious. I'm learning a little bit about the dictionary here. Who am I playing? Um, I'm playing, uh, Lynn's I'm playing Michael Hayes. Yes. Yeah, Michael Hayes, I believe. Not too sure what time it is, probably 4 30. 4 30. Needs a split here. Yellow doesn't go by itself. Oh. All around the pig's bum there is pork. Yep. <laughs> I like that one. You can still get a, you can still just tap this one and pull it somewhere over the hole and hope that Healy doesn't snooker him. But he's definitely in the back he's on the back foot. He is now. now. He needed a spit the first time. Well, the second time he was unlucky because he went round it. The first time first first time he actually put too much on the cue ball. Here we go, nice looking weight. Very nice. Is Lefton possibly only straight here on this one in bulk? Yeah. So, if Healy's going to play this one in bulk towards the corner pocket, then the next shot's going to have to be a good one because he's going to have to dial long distance. He is. I think he wouldn't be too worried about that. That's nice. What's he going to do here? I'd imagine he'd put a little bit on this and pot this. Yeah, you see him jack up on it. Yeah, it's, it's tough when you do this with a small white, but Healy's Healy, so... I mean, all his jaws... Look at that. He just hits them so nicely, doesn't he? That's how Healy rolls, right there. He's just got the confidence to play the shot too, which I love. So I'm assuming he just has to play a nice little screw back on this one. Um, if that other sh shot was anything to go by, well this should be easy. Look at that. There's a lovely sound as it hit the back of the pocket too, which is, is another mm. marker as to how well a person cues. Here we go, up and down. Yep, perfect. That one more of a click sound because it was softer, but the result is the same, and bang yeah. on for the black. We're about to see 2-0 in the second set to Healy White. Dean leads one set to love. Indeed he does, but the problem is now is that with that, the sets, is that is Healy, if he wins this, this match, it's one all, one set all, and whatever happened before that does, doesn't matter at all, does it? Not at all. No. Looks like they've gone for a little. Uh, oh no, they're still there. Well, oh, just uh, got a message through from Andy Heafy. The break cue that Dean is using is a break cue, a Taylor's break cue. Taylor's. Okay, I yep. don't. Not you familiar with for that. Those of you are, are quite looking what you see when Dean breaks. Uh, a tailor's break queue is the queue in order. Here's a cannon for an arm. Oh. 
put a ball off the break too, so look out. Nice, yeah, it was a nice break. I'm thinking yellow's off this, you know. But the problem is, is actually no, on second guards, if if he's got an, a reasonable red on, he'll take them. I was only thinking yellows because they were easiest to get on, but... There you go, Daniel Cole. The well, yellows are a little well, bit the ugly. Refs. Here. After the first one's easy, the rest of them aren't as easy. So if there's a good red on here, he'll take it. Probably the one to the left of the black spot if it's on. Or he could play the yellow onto the red as a skill shot here, first up. Establish reds that way. Yeah, I think that's what he's, exactly what he's doing. Reds are established. Not in the way, and that's okay. And that's how you get onto your hardball too. So I love the way he's actually worked that because he's gotten a red, which would have otherwise been difficult, and he's gotten onto his hard one in the same shot. Ouch. Well, she's still got a read up in the top corner, but it's not ideal. Um, it was looking to be on something a bit more central. But, uh... I think he'd want the cue ball to stay on that, that bolt trail, wouldn't he? Hmm, absolutely. If anything, if he can even get it to go in behind the yellow, that would be ideal. He doesn't want to go too far behind yellow, because that'll leave Dean an easy snooker. Oh, Try to put it in yeah. the way. Not a bad white. In fact, you can't you know, sniff of that at all. Look at that. Is Dean going to cut this yellow from the rail down to the other yellow? What do you reckon? Is no, that, he goes for safety. safety yep. Well, it's asking to do something that he's not yeah. used yeah. to doing. I've also had another match go final. Um, Neil Wally has beaten Shaden McKenzie 3 0. So Neil goes into loser round two, and um, unfortunately, that's the end of it for Shaden. The Milky Bar Kid. Did very nearly beat Kerry Wurtz in his first match, right. but Kerry managed to squirm out of it. And I believe Kerry's 2 0 up on Dez as well. Yeah. The, yeah. You, Beat Neil Wally in the first round, the round of 16. No. See, he tried to play that with a lot of side, which with a big white is, is quite easy to do, but not with a small white. No. Yeah, not my problem, sorry. <laughs> Adam, Lily and Des Wilcox. Um, they play at 4.30, uh, Hayden. And I believe that match is going to be live-streamed. Yeah, that match will be live-streamed, Hayden, so don't go anywhere. versus former New Plymouth but more to the point there is the fact that uh, wonderful to watch play against each other <laughs> no that was my um, office manager at work um, she forgot that I wasn't here at work today she was calling to tell me that there was a delivery of sawdust at work but I had to very quickly tell her I'm not working today, you'll have to ring someone else. Anyway. Looks like a... Looks like a, um... Total snooker here. Dean's done a... 
very good job of actually hiding everything from Healy here. Use the Blackwell off the red, and no contact. So, free shot here for Dean. I just wonder if he's going to take that red that's next to the yellow and then go for yellows after that, but... No, he's going to try to make this easier for himself. Just like this. Because he knows that he's still got a shot if he doesn't pot it, so it's a... Good little suggestion, that. Work making a McDonald's cheese oh no, nice. Making that cheese whilst making cheese. Nice sort of angle here for a plant. He's gonna need to watch where his cue ball goes after the plant though. The plant itself shouldn't be difficult, the ball's right over the hole. And he's actually controlled the cue ball quite nicely there. He's still got a choice whether he wants to plant again or not. Or You're going to have to be a lot quieter uh, What's what, what happened before? Why have they, ta why have they moved that? Because they were coming in and out of the door. Oh, is it yeah. pissing the players off? Oh, yeah, fair enough. Electing to not play the plant, and that's worked out well for him. Stun this across if he's got the angle. And back into the opposite corner pocket, so this will keep Dean alive in the set. He is one set to nil up, but it's always... It's always about the current set. Down it goes, so 2-1 Healy White this particular set. Dean leads the set count 1-0. Only other game that's on at the moment is Kerry Wirtz and Des Blair. Kerry currently 2-0 up over Des in terms of sets. That's a winner round one match. Dean Garnett, another proud ambassador for Heafy Billiards. Good to see Andy Heafy watching this too, because there's a number of his the products that he has and sells that are being used from players around this tournament. Well, that's an excellent break from Dean. I wonder whether that red going over the pocket top left of your screen may sway him into going reds here. There's a number of easy yellows on the table, but there are also a number of yellows that are in tight spots, and the reds actually all look pretty good, so I'm not surprised to see him going for the reds here. He played that very well. He had, had to concentrate solely on the pot there. Wouldn't have had to worry so much about his position. Just pot the ball and... I suppose it makes it a little bit easier when you're not having to play for pos. Lovely little snap off the rail there. Dean got to the quarterfinals of the... National um, Super League. Hmm? Yep. And also the winner of the Levin Easter Classic in April. I'm not a hundred percent sure where he got to with the Super League. Let me have a look.
the Super League North Islands. North Island? Yeah. So you will just just want to find out where he got to in the Super League North Islands. Because I do know that the um, that's quite important as well when you're looking to assess current form. So Dean got to the Dean got to the quarterfinals of that. Oh, look at that snap. Just needs to get away from that yellow and it'll be perfect. Preferably further up table as well, but this does cut. You can also put it in the top corner if he wants to. Oh, overcut it. I just wonder if that that break that happened at the same time he stroked that ball put him off ever so slightly. Because somebody broke that frame of the other match going on at the same time as Dean actually struck that that black. And sometimes hearing that sound just before you hit the ball can throw you off ever so slightly. Which unfortunately does happen sometimes, but you have to kind of work with it. That was a good ball to play first from Healy because if he'd if he'd missed it, you would have seen the leave. He wouldn't have left Dean a shot on the black. But now that he has potted it, then they're all on for him. So he played the first shot with a wee bit of safety in mind and. Now that he's got what he wants, he's got to finish, he can actually play it the way that he really wants to. Including perhaps putting in another snooker if things don't go the way, the way he wants to. So he is going to play this off the black. Oh, how's that not gone in? It looked, it looked, it looked like it was going to tip over and it stayed up. There was two basic ways he could have played that. The first one was to play it off the black and the second was to play it the way that he did, which was to straight into the pocket and... Still not quite sure how he's managed to not go in. And also the fact that Dean has managed to miss that. It was quite a tight cut, but as I've said before, they're a bit easier with the small cue ball. But yeah, he only had a look at that. The one that he missed to the middle, he actually had a look at it before and then shook his head and then almost had to steal himself to come back to it. Which makes me think he wasn't entirely happy with the shot to begin with. <coughs> Good little nudge on that yellow on the rail there. And the balls are so close to the pocket there that you you would think you'd hit that black anywhere and the yellow will drop. This is pretty much perfect for position now. I know he's going to have to jack up on it. But as long as he can jack up on it and get a good punch in, that he can he can get the cue ball to curve towards the middle of the table and then towards that left rail. Got the referee over to watch the shot and he's played it perfectly. That was the value of having the black where it was. Just roll this in? Yep. 
No, he didn't just roll it in. He tried to try to punch it in. It's always the one you don't stroke. Two more. Go away for five minutes. And look what happens. Your mic wasn't on, Brent. Oh, okay. So everything you just <laughs> spat there was a I was lie. saying, what a wonderful country we have. And, yeah, it's good to be here playing pool. It is indeed. We've had two years where we've had limited opportunities to play pool, unfortunately. But now yeah. that the chance is here, we're taking it with both hands. Well, this is a big break right here. Two more. And oh, there, straight into oh, the centre pocket. God. Oh, is there any balls left? Dear, oh dear, he might have just given the set away. And when you're already one set down, I hate to say it, but Houdini is doing his tricks again. Well, he, Houdini didn't have to do his tricks there. He really did mm. it all for him. I think he should be pulling the white behind that red that is on the cushion, playing it with a little bit of side, kissing the yellow over to the rail, and the rest, is, as they say, should be history. I'm thinking he's look. Let's see if he I'm thinking he's thinks the same the, as me. The yellow and the red that are together there, I reckon he looks to try to split those up and leave the yellow on, because the yellows are the really good from here. Yeah, that's true. He's actually played that brilliantly because yeah. I love the confidence because oh, that. he had to make a rail, which was the first thing. He he's, he's not on anything, though, is he's he? He's not on anything, no. He's no, got a pop no one here. established. But he's gotten down to all of these other yellows and he's got at least one that's easy, so that's the one that you take I for think the little set. Stun, little stun shots from here, little run. Well, he'll just want to get on it on the read that second up from this one so he's got an angle to go in behind the other one and of like that and of course look where the other one is over the middle yeah indeed and yeah even just a little can on this would be nice but i think he's got enough to put go around it there's the cannon the cannon well the cannon's okay isn't yeah it? and it's a good stop for the white ball too so all he has to do here is just really pot this yellow and he's pretty much dead on for angle for the last yellow. Just needs to make sure he pots it and if he's if you're gonna play slow across the nap, you've got to be careful of the nap, taking the cue ball away towards the the right hand draw as he sees it. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Maybe that can Maybe that happened oh, before. How, it hit the how ball. does that happen? I th I reckon the net might have taken that before it hit the ball, and that's why he's ended up missing it on the other side. Yeah, uh, that's going to go down, and is the one that got away, I think. Punchy screw shot to start with, and yeah, gets himself onto the ball, the two balls that are on or near bulk, so. Those are the important ones. You get these two, and then the rest of them kind of meld into them, into each other. Maybe he's not happy with where he is, though, because of that red in the centre of the table. He's still going to have to bridge over the top of it. Yeah, I think that was just a little bit straight. So, best thing would be to roll this one in the middle and give himself an angle, and maybe kick that one out. I reckon just a wee screw back off this. Well, that's a mm -hmm. lot better. Now he's got a choice. He's still a bit straight on the other red. He'll take the one to the yeah. left corner, top left corner, do that and just come across slightly. Because that will give him the one down the rail here. So no, he's no, straight no. on it though. He's, you see his shake his head. He didn't want to be straight on it. He might just play through this and put the red in the other on a pocket. I reckon that's it's definitely an option, but the problem with that is that more, more or less leaves the cue ball on the rail. 
TGD345, you might know who that is. TGD345, let's go Dino. Might be someone from the Fano. Yep. Well, it's not Burdette because she's already here. And yeah, really doesn't have to put too much on this, so... Well, we said that last time. Oh, exactly. We said roll it in, see what he does this time. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of uh, bum squeak there, wasn't there? There's a little bit of a squeaky going on. This looks dead straight. It does. Again, you've got to be careful how you play it, though. And if he rolls it slow like Dean did... I don't think he's going to roll it slow. Bang. Take the table out of it. Take the table out of it. So one set of piece. One set of piece. He saw it here live from Cashmere Club. Um, Dean looked like he was going to run away with that set. Well, not run away, but crawl away. Um, but there you go. It's never over till it's over. You've just got to make sure of everything don't you and you've also got to know the table as well it's like Dean not knowing the table there pretty much cost him I reckon or not knowing how it behaves and Healy showing him how he should be playing that by actually playing it with a bit more punch yeah so take when the table naps like that across the middle and you either you have to play with it or you have to take the table out of it by playing those harder punchy shots. Absolutely, as you can see uh, with Kerry Wirtz and Des Blair it's now two sets to one over to Kerry over Des. So Des, 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 Des was hanging in there. Yeah, Des was 2-0 down but he's yeah. done really well against the magician Kerry Wirtz to really make a good fist of it, of this. Here, as you can see, Houdini is coming back into the building. He probably would have had a good word to himself in the mirror there about yes. that last shot, because it, it should have that should have been the second set, and it can all come back and haunt you. Here we go. You've got to believe that's what he means. I bullied oh, your. T oh, he bullied my I team last <laughs> night. Okay, that's <coughs> probably Hayden Crail then. Um, hi Hayden, thanks for, well not so thanks for bullying my team. Um, <laughs> but you, you know what it is as well though, is he'll be, would have told himself just forget about it. Forget about it, you can't do anything about it now. It's one all, make the set yours. Yep. Alright. One set all, best of five sets. Let's go. Dean to kick us off, and looks like a dry break there, Wellesley. Very dry. Not a bad leave though. Bit of work involved with this frame. Here they're looking at mm, quite possibly the plant there, or. Just a way that he can play so he can get onto that plant on the yellows. Here we Didn't go, the yellows there. established. He was trying to promote that down mm. the rail, but he actually got behind it and kicked it out towards the reds. There's that plant. He's taken it very early because he was on it. Not exactly right. a, a skill shot, just a... But yeah, he, a didn't fair shot. he didn't intend <laughs> to pot the red, no. Yeah. But it's interesting now with both of those red yellows over by the black. You've got a whole flotilla of reds in the way, so how Healy plays this is going to be very important. Looks like he's playing for a double here. Mm. Or even a cut on that yellow that the cue ball is next to. Maybe that cuts into the corner there, top right. Because if that does cut, then that might release the other yellow. Mm. 
Mm, that doesn't look like it's worked out very good. Well, it might be okay actually. That yellow might pass between those reds now. If it does, then there's a chance still, but this is a nasty mm, shot I even so. The, I think the black's in the way there, John Boy. There we go, he's going to the cut. Well, get out of there. Mm. Oh, that's 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 unlucky because that's just it's all off now because that shot was on before that yellow you know, the red got in the way. Yeah, it's because yeah, it was ordered on table three. Keep Some people walking keep walking. past and distracting the players. I thought if there was something solid on it, beneath the bloody uh, the hoarding there that you could put that instead there instead. But we don't no, want to that that place for that. Oh yeah. Uh. Alright, there's uh what's Daniel Cole doing there? He's asking if it's a full snooker. Because if it's a full snooker then that's going to impact the shot that he plays here. Oh. If it's not, however, then if he elects to play off this top rail, then he's still got to make a rail. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Looks tight, looks tight. Here comes the call. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I, I was just Everyone's listening Everyone's smiling and call. laughing. So. If it's a total snooker, he shouldn't be able to play through them. He'd have to play rail first. Oh, 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 oh. And now for his next he's, trick. He's, he's, he's smile, a big smile on his face. There's a big poo-eating grin on his face. I don't think he was trying to do that at all. <laughs> Oh, you wouldn't do that. He's, he's, he was going to play the cannon and then the double and put the... Let's he's going to go up behind it, okay. Bloody. Excitement. <laughs> Here we go, it was worth a crack. Oh, well, I think just down to the fact that he didn't really have another shot, but... I'm just thinking how awesome it would have been if he'd played the cannon and then the double into the middle. Either shot would have been spectacular if he'd pulled it off. I still think Dean will still try and get a two shot. Although they're, they're all there but I, knowing Dean, I know Dean, he, he's going to be looking for two shots I reckon. Well he's playing the red on the rail so that tells me that he is. Yeah. No. Well, he would have gotten a snooker anyway, wouldn't he? Yeah. Now that they're all open, you think he takes them on? Well, he'll have to now, and hopefully he's not thinking about that shot he played into the middle last time. And look at that. Well, it was mm. much... He's got much cleared that out of his head. wasn't it? Because he actually cured it with confidence rather than just trying to bleed it there. We're in for a plant now. Yep. Right. So a bit of gardening. Bit of gardening required. Hey. Uh, yes, yes, please. Oh, yeah. Um, um, oh, you go. Oh, just um, Coke Zero or a Diet Coke. Have something stronger if you want. Oh, actually, now that you mention it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> double, uh, double Quad, quadruple Jack, whiskey, please. <laughs> double of Jack Daniels Diet Coke, thanks. Double Jack Daniels. Tall, Tall glass. Double rubs on the pink gins. The pink gins. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. The pink. Double Jack Daniels and Coke. Coke. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. You've got to be careful with this one, John. He, he wants to screw it back just a little bit. He doesn't want to leave himself too hard a shot. Oh, he's pulled out the big. Um, the big extension, extension. very very close to the black but I can see from over here that he's not he's no nowhere near it but it looks close here here we go 
There we go. Now. That was a problem. He had to stretch. He couldn't really get any Q power into it. Yep, this one's running. Uh, I'm just having a quick look at the table because it's hard to see from the screen. But I think he's got a bit, a bit of angle here. He does. I reckon he'll cut this into the middle think, and yeah, take. I, the, I think he's just going to take the bulk rail. He's just going to trouble it. Dangerous. Oh no. I, 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 could, I told you the, the angle of that was always going there. You reckon? Oh, absolutely. Well, he, he had an angle. I, I'm surprised it actually went anywhere near there. You know? I thought he'd take the rail somewhere just to the left of that yeah. that bolt that the cube was sitting next to. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not uh, the best player with this little white yet, but even I knew that that was going to be close to and off. So one good safety shot required now. Or a double. Yeah, that might be worth going for the you double and leaving him dead straight on the yellow. You might try to put the cue ball behind the back here if it's not for a double. Yeah, he's left him that, that dead straight shot that I said he might. But Healy's got the cue power to screw all the way back here. Watch and out for the big hoof. I'm just looking over at the table. His body language says this is easy. You watch this for queuing. We oh, <laughs> expecting that to go all go. the way to the back rail, but it's that's fine where it is. That'll cut. Oh, it'll cut. It'll cut all right. Here we go. One nil to Healy. Set number three. Indeed, it was, and maybe he was just wanting to put more control on that that drawer instead of absolutely hitting the beans out of it and yeah. screwing back about two table lengths and ending up nowhere he just wanted to make sure he got enough so that that was on that that was on because we were expecting him to wow us with the length of the table screw back but no, he, forget that yeah. he didn't need to no. well to be honest I have watched this game now for the last half an hour and Dean has made a couple of errors that I wouldn't expect him to make um, and Healy, Healy being the player he is has capitalised on both those errors um, so I wouldn't be giving Healy White any more chances because we all know what Healy can do he actually hasn't hit his straps yet I believe Healy. Well, he wants, when Healy hits his straps you, ha you hardly come to the table. He's been kind of going in third gear, hasn't he? That's all he's needed so far, because Dean's made those errors, those critical errors. Um, you, you get Healy in, in gear number four, and uh, yeah, good night, Irene. Well, the, th the problem for Dean is not so much the mistakes he's been making, but it's just the crucial times he's been making them. Towards the end of frames, when yeah. the table's generally at its most open, and Healy's just accepted it with glee, yep. so he needs to tighten his finishing up because if he keeps doing what he's doing, then Healy's just going to have easy frames. I, I, you probably, you prob, you guys were probably saying that when I was playing Baden, eh? Brink better get his act together, otherwise it could be uh, early shower. Well, yeah, you were doing which was fair enough. You're too, doing everything <laughs> brilliantly to start with, and then you'd fail to finish. Yeah, it was like yeah. well. I'm pretty we know I'm how good a player you I'm are. I'm really good at snookering myself when there's only one ball in the way. Um, did a bit of that too. Your, yeah. position, your ball positioning was, wasn't was so great early. Well, this is about Healy right now. He's looking like uh, taking command of the third set. Oh, I think he just uh, wanted to click that red out of the way, but he's okay because he's yeah. still got this yellow here. Yeah. Down the end? Yeah. Yeah. Four. Keep it simple. It's a real nice, oh, yeah, should be down the end. Probably just a screw back, I'd imagine. He, looks, he actually looks like he's going into the middle. Okay. Something like that. was a bit of a click, lovely click clap from the crowd. Yep. Oh, that's overcut. Nap. Nap. Oh, just about napped in though. He'd overcut it by right. a mile and it still nearly so, went in. Maybe there's a bit of a problem with that, that whole. Dean's missed it. Healy's now missed it. I think I saw you miss one in there as well. 
earlier when you were trying to play a soft shot. And oh, that, yeah, that yeah. In. yeah. That really napped in that one. I think I ended up cutting that one into the left hand corner after Baden lay a little bit of a almost a snooker. And I cut it from there. Ooh. Snooker. This is going to be a tough one to get out of. He's, all, he's got all the roots covered. He's, he's, got to, he? he's got to go off one cosh and just hope that he ca- catches the edge of it. One cosh to the side, I would have thought, where he is there. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. I, I reckon Thanks, this. Yeah. Cheers, Thank mate. I'm just wondering if he still tries to pot this, whether he goes for the glory pot here. One cushion is. Asking quite a lot here. He's got a gap there. He's, gonna he's got it. a gap, so he's going to oh, try just, it. I can't see him pulling enough side on it, to be honest. Well, the first thing is he's got to avoid hitting these two reds in front of him. Like, if he can do that with lots of side, he's, he's a chance. I think he's just got to have a crack at the middle. I know it's tough, but this is tougher. He's got to go in between those reds, hit the caution, and then come back. And he's playing off the rail. No, no you this see... Is, yeah. He didn't get the right cure, cure on it. It was, a, it was a really hard shot though, to be fair. Any shot he played there would have been hard. And well, what's wrong with one cushion straight across and, and... He couldn't do it. He could have double kissed the black, it might have gone in. No, because the red just to the left of the cubal where it was was spat away. Oh, the, must, the shot wasn't on. I must have been looking from a left-hand side point of view. Well, you are left-handed, <laughs> so... Alright. You can always but put, put money on that Dean will finish these up. Yeah, off the off the long rail wasn't on. He had to go off the top short rail if he was going to still pot it. Yeah, true. Oh, in between here, John. In between. That's what they call that shot. It's a tweener, isn't it? He's in it's between three tweaker. of them it's there. a little tweaker. No, indeed, he should probably take that uh, one into the left-hand cushion with a bit of screw. Well, he's going to take this one. I'm actually surprised he's going this way, to be honest. Yeah. He's ended go. up okay, though. Perfect. That's better than okay. But we have said perfect about three frames now, and something's happened. Surely not. Well, you know, you don't judge it from what it looks like now. You judge yeah. it from how it ends up. Exactly. Come on, Dino. This is ABC. What are you... Taking his time here. Just, just going to trickle that in. It's to stop shot. So the, the thing about this shot here is that he may get a clip on the eight here. That'll just bring it out a little bit though. Yeah, yeah, but if he doesn't control the little clip on the eight, it could end up past the pocket and not be able to cut. But he's actually played that really well. He's managed to do that so he doesn't hit the eight. The eight's still over the hole. He's got to cut it in. Must be Must closer be right to on the, the jaw. Yeah. Should be all, all good. The side view makes know. it look like a really tricky cut, but... That's a, just a little bit of left-hand side. Or right-hand side, actually. There you go. Well, you made it look easy. I'm, I'm betting that was harder than it looked from... One all. ...the side view, and, and it was an easier shot from this main view. It was. But Dean played it like it was the easy shot. So that's one all and one all. In sets. John. Yep. Just um, hey, let people Hello. know that after this match it's Adam Lilly versus Des Wilcox on the mainstream table. Uh, yep. So yeah, after this match finishes we will have Adam Lilly versus Des Wilcox for Ooh. your viewing pleasure. The Wiz versus Lightning. Indeed. We'll see which one is faster. <laughs> I don't think we'll need the uh, shot clock out for that one. Although I said that about mine and Baden's game, but that And you while. needed an extension, and so did he. Oh, Heath. yeah, yeah. Dinner at midnight, you're an absolute wizard. So I reckon you should be joining me in the booth at some point, <laughs> if you're in the area. Because I know you've got... You, you're almost speaking on the chat like you're commentating yourself. All right, Dino's going on off. Um, but... Having a look at the table, it's it's messy. It is, but the free shot can help clean some of the mess up, and yeah. I think that's what Healy will be looking at. 
What shot can I play to make this table look easy for myself and my parents? Playing this way, I'd say. Oh, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have put the two balls close together like that. So he's actually overhit that. Oh, I'm a do. <laughs> Me and the cat. Oh, yeah, 3 1. I think so. Yeah. Just hot off the press, ladies and gentlemen. Kerry Wirtz, three sets. Des Blair, one set. So Kerry progresses through the winner's side to round three. And Des comes over to my side some, at some stage, I guess. Kerry through the winner's qualification then. Yeah. yeah so that, that win puts Kerry through into the winner's qualification. What does that mean? So that, that gets... That's qualifying into the semis. Yeah. Oh, really? So he's in the semi already? Not quite. All but. All but. All right. Well, Maru, that was Healy's... That was Healy's previous haunt, wasn't it? Used, used to live in Awamaru, used to play in Awamaru. Now, of course, living and playing in Tokoroa for Waikato... Still wish he'd come back over here to be honest. I love seeing him in Christchurch, but I guess we get to see him in Christchurch when he comes here. Just wonder whether this, and Healy's been queuing it up a number of times, if this goes past those two reds. It appears that it does. Well, the way well, he played it goes. was. We didn't see it going like that. No, well, it must have been on, or at the very least, if he could get the thinnest snick on the second red and make those two reds on and pop the ball. Now, I don't know whether the, that cannon was on, but it certainly looked on for the, the pop past the two of them. Yeah. I don't know who Toddy is now. Toddy. I think it's Jace. Who? Jason. Jason, Jason Todd. Jason Todd, the, the snooker player has joined us. Right. Where's that? Like there's a bit of shade somewhere else in the room. But anyway. I think is Dino going for the cut here or maybe a little bit of snooker? Snooker. Look at that. Oh Blue look at that. Shot. That's just that's filth, that so is. So he and looks over and says, is that a total? Um, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. For those who are watching for the first time, it means he only has to hit the red and it does not have to hit a cushion after making contact. Yeah, total snooker, yeah. same as in the two-shot rules. <laughs> so it is, it is him. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so he's made a red, so he's OK there. So, Toddy, when are you going to come over to the dark side and play this game? I'll tell you what, who, who was here watching with intent, interest today was Gary the Legend Hale. And he's going, to make a, he's going to make the move to this game. So, I mean, I think you guys should stick to the snooker personally. Yeah. <laughs> all, come and, all come and have a bit of fun. Jesus has played that. Dean's played that well. The, the question is whether that red that's below right of the black spot is on, which it's not. So, off the cush? Yeah, off the rail here. If he can glue that Ooh, to the yellow. Look at that, eh? He hasn't quite glued it, but I don't think the yellow's on, so that at least stops Dean from being able to to pot that yellow and get a, get a finish. Not that Dean's in this moment in time looking for a finish. There we go. Cut over the hole just to, to block it so it takes away a few of Hilly's options that does. Yeah. I don't know what's he, what's his plan here? Stunned by the look of it and then use the the next red to get yeah, is the that, red out. Is that, that red? The top I know it's a tough shot, but is that red on 
into the bolt corner. If he gets on this red here for the other red on the rail. Yes. Oh, oh what? Maybe, maybe Are not you now. kidding? Are you it? it didn't go in any any Chinese snookered on it too. How um, unlucky could you get in one attempted skill shot? Yeah. This game's <clears> not easy, John. This game's not. Sometimes no, this things game don't go your way. It's cruel and heartless sometimes. Yeah. Here we go. That's a good shot. Unless it goes in. I was going to say that if that had tracked further on, there was a wee chance that could have been on yeah. into this bottom right pocket. Just looking at it now with all the side plus. I think he's just going to hit this as hard as he can. Or is he going to play for. Oh, it's a total, so he might go for the snooker. Oh, yeah. Oh, just put it on the rail here. Oh, yeah. yeah, well nice. played. That's nice, but uh, Dean's got the ball over the hole to split those two balls out. He's also got a lot of balls to snooker behind him, which I think is more Dean's MO. Well, Gonna you'd play be surprised. This. He, he does bring out the big guns every now and then. Here we go. But he's gotten one of them off the rail, and that yeah. unlocks the second ball. Yeah, I think sooner or later there's going to be a snooker happening. Yeah, especially if he gets out of pos anywhere. I, I would, wouldn't put it past him playing the one into the middle here, but... He's looking at the one in bolt to the corner for the moment. If I'm going position and longevity of this frame, I'd be going for the one in the middle. Because then you can take the one down the rail and bulk, and then the one in the D. Yeah. Always uh, just playing He's safe now. safe. He's I don't know, I would try to pop that and then use that other ball to play safe. Then you kiss it off the rail. Um, this could be one of those cases where it's a total snooker and he comes off the rail and goes behind it. Yeah, well, he's definitely left the chance for it, hasn't he? But Ooh, the way Healy's well, played it, he's played it aggressively. And It'd definitely be why not? Because you, you look yeah, at where all these yellows are. That's why I was yeah. well, didn't, didn't like the shot Dean played because yeah. he, he left another yellow on a rail. So this will just Healy's be trying to yeah, just a little snooker. force him into having to snooker. Here we go. So he, he's managed to get a snooker there. But you see where all these yellows lie is. You've got one, two, three near rails. One's close-ish to a pocket. Looks like he's going a bit wide here, John. Might go around the back of it. No, put a bit of side Straight on, in. Right? Straight into it. Just to show you what Brother Love knows. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you're still playing in this and I'm not. <laughs> did you practice your shootout shots? Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in second, just asking me if I practice my my uh, shootout shots, and I did, but it didn't help me. Nice oh, snooker. It's filth, but in a good way. You love to see it because. <laughs> You'd love to see the skill involved in putting a person think, in a snooker like that. I think we've got a big clash uh, in the next round, Simon Singleton and Baden Jackson. Would that be right? Yep. Correct. And it's not on the stream. Oh, man, I hope he... Uh, it's not being streamed either. Would how can be? that one not be streamed, boys because, and girls? Because of... Predetermined. Predetermined? Also, we haven't seen Adam or Des Wilcox on the stream yet. I hope that goes to a shootout. And then when Baden beats Simon, I'll say, have you been practicing your shootout shot? Cheeky, he's a bit <laughs> cheeky, isn't he? Just like you are. <laughs> You're the cheeky one. <laughs> so he's going to use the free shot to... He's going to push the safe, is he? Push it on the rail, it's okay. pretty crafty, isn't it? Pretty crafty. It is, and you, you see a lot of players use that shot early on in a match, especially if it, on a break where the other, other player fouls, you'll see the first shot being to, especially on an open sort of table, for them to push the opposite ball onto a rail. Yeah. No, Dean plays those shots really well. It's a lovely confident sort of punch shot, that. isn't it? You're just trying to stir some something up, aren't you? I'm trying to get my partner's um, attention, but I think she's looking but pretending not to see me. Where is she? Alright, back to
to my pool partner. Let's see what he's done. A little bit of your commentary partner. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're always doing well, John. What do you reckon with this? A little bit of cheeky side? Yeah, cheeky side. Just cheeky side. Similar to the shot he played before. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Went around, except instead of getting the kiss, he goes around the ball. Call that a little bit of cheeky check. I don't know if he checked that as much as he wanted to. Surely he's, he didn't really want to be rolling that ball into the middle to get on the black. Surely not. No, but he... He's got a bit of distance here that he can use to screw back on, or he could he could always put the the other one into the top pocket, same side of the table. Well, here we go. Well, it looks like he's going to have to actually hit this quite firm into the middle to get back. And you and me both know what the on cue tables think about yes. that. I would probably put this in the corner. To be fair, put it in the corner because you're naturally going to come back towards the black spot off the rail and then you're going to have a much easier black. Here we go. Hold on. Here we go, Dino. Ah, oh, nice. Oh, that was pretty confidently played. It was I guess if you put them in the right part of the hole, they actually yep. still go in. But now he's, now he's got this yeah, cut on black, which could be a wee bit scary. They've both had a bit of trouble. Oh, oh! Used the nap to his advantage that time. You see the weight that he played it, but because he played with the nap, he was able to use the nap to draw it in. So there we go, 2 1. Set number 3. Tell you what, this, is a, this uh, is a great oh. match to watch. So Tolly's on his way. To here. We could do oh, with, a, we could do with a, another commentator, but we'll see you here soon. He'll be going down to the club to practice for tomorrow, probably. Oh, he's going to watch that. The white stone. Ah. I believe you're heading to the white stone classic there, Mr. Tully. Good luck in that. Wow. One, two, Holy three. cow. Is there any balls Is left? Four off the break. The or funny five. The thing when I find fine with Healy when he breaks is that, that, little, that thing that Dean's just moved, all the balls are gone from it. Yeah, you don't so have every, to worry about the everyone ball everyone else is sort of rack. hitting it so soft that uh, oh not quite look at this even though you got all those balls all of a sudden he's in a bit of strife I think that's okay because that gives him a chance to get on that ball I was thinking of the one over the pocket but instead he's going to go this way he's going to go top rail here yeah Oh, that's all. Oh, he's going to get the jaw. Oh, oh he got both the jaws If he'd only death. gotten one jaw, he would have been fine. He could come off the rail here. Yeah. Big shot come in, ladies and gentlemen. Hold your breath. No. Nope. Healy wasn't wanting to do that. But it's the only shot he's got. Well, yeah. Surely. Oh, I thought this is on. Oh, Maybe he oh. needs to put a bit of side on it. Oh, there we go. Now, what does Dino do from here? Good control that actually. I'll tell you what, there is enough room for a ball to come off the rail, go inside that red, but he's got to get on it. Will he dribble that one into the middle? He's going this way. There must be enough room behind it this way. Yeah, well. You see, the players play that to basically hit, mm. hit the ball that's yeah. in the way as a plug and use it as a plug. Well, he's left a little gap there for Healy. See? Nice. Bit of brump and grind hurt no yeah. one. Bit of bump and grind, are we allowed to say that? Healy's, oh, oh look at this. Don't go behind that. Where's the cue ball going? John Virgo <laughs> again. Oh, his body language from over here. I can look at the table. On. He's got to swerve it. I thought this was on normally, maybe it's not. Wow. Oh, what a shot! What a shot! Way to leave yourself ugly, Healy, but what a shot to get out of it. There you go, Dean would have been licking his lips until he saw that one coming. Is it? Nah, back in your seat. Especially when it was 2 1 to Dean. Oh, yeah, and that's easily. could have been a. 
possibility if Healy had missed that. Look at where the yellows were, they were all nice. This has been quite a good match to uh, commentate on, actually. It's been up and down. You just never know what's coming next. Well, it's been a bit of everything, really. You know? it's good safety, good potting, good positional shots, poor, poor positional shots, good rescues. Good, very good rescues. Multiple balls off the break there as well. I think we, I think Healy got five balls off that previous break. I, I was just counting the number that was on the table. I'm sure there were ten balls left on the table. Sorry, ten. That was another good break from the uh, Dean there with the with the Gary Taylor break cue. For those of you who are wanting to know what what type of break cue, it's a Gary Taylor. Now I've got a Gary Taylor playing cue and if it's as good as what that is um, well Dean's got all the gear so let's go this was this is looking pretty um, ABC -ish. it does, it does. Yep. and central to that is the fact that this yellow to, immediately to the left of the black spot passes the other one so yep. he doesn't have to get fun funky position on it he's bang mm. on it now Right, and I think he, he plays this yellow into the into the corner, into the right hand corner, and that's where the black's going to go. He's going to leave himself an angle on that one to the left corner. I'm thinking left, go left first and then right, because then the black's on the same oh, side. Oh, this is great! This is he pots that one, he pots the other one, and there's natural half ball to get on the black. Now it's a little bit straight. Or is he going to screw past it? It's amazing how you right handers see different shots. Le Left-handers like to make it easy as possible. You reckon? Here we go, a little screw. So, oh, oh, same pocket, woo. okay. Look at that white. Whew, here well, we go. Option, didn't Hold he? your breath, ladies and gentlemen. This is for the third set. Are we in for something? A turn. There it is. No, there Dino. shall be no more in this set. So there we go, Dino. Two from Dean. Healy White won. What a game. The thing that would break your heart as a player playing this format is that those two frames you got in the previous set mean absolutely nothing. Exactly. Because you were you unable to win the set. Now. Yeah, now you go back to a zero. So when I, when I was two sets down, and I think it was 2 nil down to Baden as well. 2-1, two, one, two, one down. Um, you still got a chance, because all, you know, once you get got that first set, then it was sort of, we've got to start again from scratch. All this break, I can't believe this guy's break. All the balls just take off from the rack. Well, that, that's the thing, too. You've got to get the balls moving off the yeah. break. I mean, you don't have to hit them really hard to for a good break, but Healy's obviously got the strength and the timing. Reg Churchwood, hello Reg. A man of few words, just Healy White. <laughs> I like it. We had a few words earlier. Oh, did he? So then now you ask a question, how do you you cope with the fact that everyone in the room is watching your game because all the other games are finished. I, I reckon Healy loves yeah. it. Yeah, oh, he yeah. Loves, loves the attention in a, in a good way because he loves people watching him play. Absolutely. Ooh. And he's just pushing the yellows ugly there. So yep. there's no, I don't think there was any real intent to pot that. So you look at how ugly the rest of the frame looks. I don't know, do you think Dean will be potting this one? No. Ah. Or if he does, then he'll just play a plant and yeah. leave the next one over the bin. He had multiple balls to play to get this over the hole, so the fact that the first one goes down isn't a problem. That's the second one here. I think he's asked for an extension there. I don't think, oh, they've, they've, 
just to let you know now that the game's gone over 90 minutes surprisingly um, they now have a ref and a stop clock of 30 seconds Bravo. Tilt, tilt, kick the table. Kick the table, all right. Well, something that Barry Ede would always say when what your ball ended up right over the hole like that. Kick the table, kick the table. <laughs> Richie, brother love. <laughs> oh, there we go. Behind the red, oh. behind the oh. red. Oh. Uh, I guess that's what he was trying to do. Now he's was, sort of he's opened, he was, he's opened the table up a bit. That's now. why he was so disappointed that it didn't work. Does Willie play that other red onto the red in the middle? Is that a you plant? Did, well, that's a plant. You there. did right, John John Dixon, and they've been practicing for it too. Like the rules, Brent? No, because that's supposed to be I win, they lose. So I don't like those rules at all. No, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Love the rules, John. Love the rules. We can actually snooker in this game. So if you go for the big clearance and you and you um, don't do it, you get penalised, which I think should should be part of the game. Well, it's part of the game anyway. Yeah. It doesn't matter what game that you play, but you seem to get punished more in this format because of the ability of players to snooker and what have you. Then it just puts that much more pressure on you to actually complete. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sensing another shootout coming. I don't know. I don't know why. Oh, I do too. You know? It's not just because Healy was already involved in one, surely. Yeah. But just two, the closeness two in one of day. this game. Just how close this game is. It's, Healy gets this set two each, and then oh, I reckon after that, that's the only logical conclusion, really. Well, there we go. We've got the boys in pink in the background there. They're always Stump, trouble. They always trouble those Stumpy two. Stumpy and Josh. Beware the, Josh the guy, the guy with him to wearing support him in this tournament. Who else have we got there? Is that Dez and is that Chris Geary? Yeah. It's Chrissy, I think it's Chrissy Wilcox just between Chris oh, Geary yeah. and uh, Stumpy so there. It is. The rose between two thorns. Yep. Yeah. Then you've got um, Jojo Coleman yeah. and Joseph Joseph Magon and Oh yeah, that's Joseph Magon, is it? Oh Mitch Gourley was to his, oh, his yeah. left. I see Mitch Morley. So there's a good, there's a good wee crowd in here actually. It's it's a lot, a lot of fun to watch people come in and watch pole. Get to cast an eye over the the crowd as you're commentating. We're actually in a good spot where we can see everyone. Um, you've also got Steve and Sandy Collier as well, who are locals. How are we doing for time? I think I'm playing at four thirty. I think Correction, you were playing at 4.30. Was it past 4.30? No, 4.24. Oh, 4.24? Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll Am I one of those matches? Yeah. yeah. But right. why I said that is because otherwise you'd be here. Oh, yeah, what table they've got me on? I think you're on the I think you're here. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to love and leave you. It, leans it in. It's been a pleasure commentating next to The Voice. I'm sure I'll be back for some more. But uh, I've got to go to work. See you soon. And Thank by you work, boys. he means pole. <laughs> <laughs> next voice. Thank you. Thank you, Brent. So just me for the moment. Um, why is Dean not using the shark rack? Um, he's probably just, maybe he doesn't like it. Maybe he's just used to using the regular triangle. Or maybe he's broken with the shark rack earlier as um, Dinner at Midnight was saying. And for whatever reason hasn't gotten what he wants with it. now. Oh, what the hell? Okay. Okay. I've never seen that before. You see that little extension he's put on the wrist? That little extension he's put on the wrist so he can play a rail shot with it. You see something new in every pool tournament.
Well, I didn't even know you could get one of those, but oh well, maybe I might look for one now. Don't have a shark rack either, I should look for one of those too. Could pause on the black here, these reds are in a good position actually because you can just run into them and not have to worry about the in off. Focus on the pot only, which he does. So one game apiece in the fourth set. But Dean holding the whip hand in terms of the sets, he's 2-1 ahead and he's getting to the point here now where you really want to be looking at winning every frame here. This is just to keep yourself alive. I, I do too, John, to be fair. I, I think the black ball rules are more they're more attacking rules, first of all. Oh, what a... Is that five off the break again? What? Wow. That's about all I can say to that. It's, he's absolutely gone off like a cannon. Every, every frame he's broken. Please get the following players to table four, Brad Wells, Mike Hayes. Table two, Stephen Alderson, Kevin Singh. And on to table three, Ooh, Jackson. tried to move the yellow off the rail and it didn't work. Could play this one down the rail now if he wants to. He's got the black covering being covered by the yellow and it gave him a bit of license to play that shot. The fact that the black is not immediately on anywhere, so. Now Dean to the table, having to work out how to get around for the black. Put, a f put enough balls to get to that position. But yeah, I, what I like about these shot, these rules over the two shot rules is that you don't have the intentional fouling. Because I think with the two shot rules, within, oh dear, and Dean's just cut me short there. What I don't like about the two-shot rules is the fact that you can intentionally play the black or your opponent's ball and essentially avoid having to having a an honest attempt at your own and you give two shots away. Well, that's, that's another bad miss. I, unless he was playing deliberately to leave it there, which I don't think he was, but... If you can, you can keep deliberately fouling and leaving your opponent no shot and they're having to do the same back to you, it's just, it just becomes a spectacle really. I mean, I do like, I don't mind the rules, but I, I do like these ones a lot better because of the, that attacking element and the fact that you can play a skill shot and the fact that you've got a free shot plus a visit as opposed to two shots carry. It forces players to be more innovative with how they use their free shot, as opposed to having two shots where you you kind of see the same old, same old. Dean's played that really well. You can get a wee screw back on this. Even if he ends up in a similar sort of position to where he is now, then this will go down the rail. They do, John. I'd love to see it. I'd love to. S missed it. But yeah, um, I'd like to see it too, and and also I'd like to see the the free ball get taken away. The fact that you ca you can't snooker in, in C and Z, it, sometimes it can lead to some ridiculous situations. But that's 
sort of thing's a discussion for a different time. But in terms of two shot versus black ball, then yeah, the the honest attempt that you have to make plus the the skill shot and the the free visit and the free shot instead of the two away makes I think makes the, the rules a lot easier to easier to follow, easier to play. Oh just missed it. It's about half a ball with the way there. Probably would have potted it too. Doesn't doesn't have to move the cue ball here, he can just play it from there if he wants to. Why move it if it's already easy from there? Trying to promote the eight, but it just pushed it further down the rail. Playing for another snooker there, so very much like Dean, he wasn't happy with where he left himself, so he just played for the easy snooker to recalibrate. He just had to go at that, just had to have a go at it. He gave it the best chance there, but he didn't pot it. But you see where he's left it though, he's left it in bulk, so all of Healy's balls down this end of the table, he's still got to come up with a good shot last to get back down there for the black. Are you t talking about Earl the Pearl? as a commentator and um, comparison to me because I know Earl Strickland's a really good nine ball commentator as well as being obviously a brilliant player I'll be going for a double here this doubles inside that that yellow on the left hand side of the table No, he's gone the other way. He went went the other way because he had two yellows that he could have covered instead of perhaps the way where he could have potted the black off the yellow. I'm a little bit surprised at that anyway. Well, this should be like selling peas, really. You just... Needs to come out nicely for the black here, which he does. Camellia, I wonder how you're feeling right now. Down goes the black with a plum, so Healy White now two games to one over Dean Garnett, but Dean holds a two set to one advantage, and I shall be back shortly.
Yeah, no, there, there was a particular reason why the sound was off um, dinner. I just nipped off. Same as Healy. Looks like a bit of jostling here between these two players. Um, saw Healy missing that double as I was walking back past. I want to get this over the hole ideally, which he has done. Dean might actually have a chance to split these balls up though. But probably more to the point, he's got a chance to get this yellow in behind that red that Healy just parked. <laughs> got a good nudge out as well. I just wonder whether he might have ran a little too far with the cue ball there to have any real useful shot. This is quite a tight cut, and he's, whether or not he actually decides to go for it, and it's not to nobody's surprise, just lay it up over the hole. There's no no finish there, so there was no point in potting it. Frame's in an interesting position actually because that's just managed to stay out. But one good shot here from either player to clear those two balls, and there's a finish. Otherwise, the table's open, so you just wonder if it, either of these players will ever get into a position where they'll have a go for that. That split. You would think Healy more so than Dean because Healy's got a ball in the middle of the table that's quite apt for the job. I wonder if he, Dean's going to try and screw right up the rail here. I think that's what he was trying to do, something similar to it, but he just got his lines all fluffed. See all that snap, He's put an awful lot of top on that. It's probably not such a bad thing that he's not ended up on a ball so much. He's going to come off the rail and try and put this in the middle. No, well now it is a big deal. Dear oh dear, that's a bad foul to give away. He's got two balls that are stuck though does Dean so at the very least he's going to have to get them both out in the one shot unless he's going to look for a snooker elsewhere yellows have landed slightly ugly here wonder what he's going to do with us. I mean, how, if any chance, he's going to get onto this last yellow. It does go in the bottom left corner pocket. So if he can somehow get back onto there, oh, straight into the corner. Didn't look like going anywhere else but... He'll be very, very quickly using his free shot to split the yellow and the red apart. And the other thing I loved about that is where he's left the yellow. Not just about getting the split, it's about, if you can, putting the opponent's ball in an ugly place. Going for the one over the middle here, which... This is quite interesting because he's. I was going to say he had a number of other 
balls that he could have taken that were perhaps not as finicky as that one. But he knows better than we do and he's played that initial shot very well. And he's not going to top through on this one. Big screw back, there's the cue power. There's the cue power, he doesn't want it on the rail. Should be okay. Flick it in the middle, make sure you come back. And he does, and he did. No, this is a New Zealand uh, road of snooker finals. Oh dear. I just wonder if he might have gotten a kick on that. I'm not wanting to excuse him or anything, but it certainly looked like a bad contact on the black. It's quite possible that he just played a bad shot, mind. Bring the yellow off the rail, he's not really brought it off enough for me. I'd so here he will be looking at the big double or the big cut or even just putting him in another safety like he has here. It's going to be difficult to get a snooker for Dean here. He's got to be pinpoint with both where he hits the yellow and the speed. Oh, he went for the cut. I tell you what. It's probably a good thing he didn't hit the black. That's a that's a leave and a half from there. Does Healy have a go at this? Or does he try to lay up for a snooker? If he hits this half ball or slightly off half ball he can get a snooker, but he's had a go! Double behind the yellow, so very nearly. Yeah, we're quite new to this um, form of the game, Road of Snooker Finals. So this simple black to go two each in this set, and then he's just got one more to go until he wins it all. So down it goes. What a frame that was. What a game this has been. It's just been a bit of everything in this. Yeah, no, you did right. Um, the dinner at midnight, Tara Jackson. You've, you've all, you've all kind of got there before I have. Um, we are New Zealand is still relatively new to the black ball rule set, and well, just the the English two shot rules as well. Um, we did initially play the the two shot rules to begin with. We we play our own set of rules here, which no other country plays, called Clubs New Zealand Eight Ball Rules or Chartered Club Rules. But we have seen a trend to playing the English two shot variations, and we did initially start with English two shot and. We've now shifted to black ball rules because of the the better prospects of being able to send players overseas and the fact that this game just looks better on TV than, dare I say it, the, sh the two-shot rules do. But you, if you watch this game in the UK and they're playing black ball rules in the UK, then it will look a bit different to here because I mean, many of our players are still trying to learn how best to to construct a frame of black ball pole. I mean, I myself don't actually play it, but I watch enough of it to get a decent gist of what's actually happening. So, and obviously, you need that if you're going to commentate on it. Otherwise, you look like you look like you're talking out of your bum hole. It's 
think Healy will be looking to leave this yellow into the middle for last, just because of where it is in proximity to the black. He just needs to make sure he stays away from the reds. The red either next to both of those yellows, whichever yellow he takes, he's got to be careful of the contact on the red. I mean, either way he goes, he's going to have that issue. And I actually think going this way, the middle pockets, is easier. Because the deflection is taking it more away from the black, just as he has there. Yeah, Australia loves it too. Um, dinner, sorry, road of snooker finals. Oh, look at the screw back again. And that's ended up perfect. Back of the pocket this time, no mistakes, so we, we roll on, two sets apiece, the players shake hands, yeah, you did, did right Terry, um, <laughs> Do I know Baden's score? Um, against Simon Singleton? I'm not 100% sure, I'm sorry. So, yeah, we can't actually see that score at the moment, sorry, um, Tara. I know you've got more skin in the game in there than most. There you are, Camellia. I wondered where you were. I assumed you were still watching, but... This would be just like playing, surely, wouldn't it? You'd be feeling nervous as. Talk to the partners of the people playing and they always say how nervous they get watching. Oh, lovely shot again from Healy. He's really starting to hit his stride now, at least in terms of his shot play. You see that fear starting to go. Not that Healy really had much fear to begin with, but you see he's loosened the reins almost completely now when he's going for a clearance. He's saying one set each, John. I'm just waiting for it to come up on the screen. You mean one game each, do you? In the first set. He, he plays his best pull when he is relaxed, um, dinner. And sometimes you see him, especially early in a match, and he looks a bit tense and he kind of cues that way as well, but when that arm starts to really flow is when you know you're in trouble. I'm just looking around to see who else is watching. Uh, Simon and Baden's game to see if I can get someone else to respond, maybe. Yes, he is. I do have Richie Whitty sitting over there. Maybe we can... Maybe we can reach out to him and ask him. I know Alex Stones is wandering around the venue as well. So we're just going to call him over and see if we can get a score for you, Tara. Can we get a score up here? 
We, we only get the, you only get the frames. Oh, you only get the sets. Sets, yeah. So, Alex is just wandering over there to check for you now, Tara. Terry Stewart, I definitely would, would like to think so. Well, I do, I do try to anyway. Where have you copied that from, John? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, we can see. Don't, don't worry, we've found out, found out what. It's because it's not full to, screen. We're trying to need a food screen. Okay, so we've just discovered we can see the um, the actual score. The. It, so you, we can see the actual. Um, game score as well. We just needed to make the, the window a little bit bigger here. And make the other one a bit smaller. So we've, we've made the playing window a bit smaller, but that's okay because I'm I'm watching the, the big screen next to it's it. More the comments that we... It's just the comments we need to make sure that we can still keep on top of those. Nice little touch on the red to take away the large angle on the yellow. No, you're right, Jana. We just couldn't see it from where we were. But now, now that we can see it, then we don't have to ask. Off the rail, off the back of the red. That's at least what Dean will be looking for. The, the shot's very much on, he just has to be... has to look carefully at where he needs to hit the rail first. Yeah, needed to hit the rail earlier. So he needed a bigger deflection off the red. He's ended up thinning the red and missing the, the pot. We're just about getting to the point we need more screens. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing that, isn't it? You get to the point where you need more screens because it's more complicated. I mean, we're running on three computer screens here. You've got one that shows the the cameras being used and all the the inputs and so on. My control screen. Paul's control screen. Oh, he is furious with himself. Dear, dear. He's still shaking his head now, I was just watching was just watching his mannerisms as he left the table. Oh, did Dean leave a wee chance there? Definitely for a snooker. That's not made a rail. That's not made a rail. So that's going to be two. I was going to say two away, sorry, that's the wrong rule set. That's going to be a free shot to Dean. So, as you could imagine, taking that in hand. Play the yellow, he's got to make sure he cues us very well. Oh, he's hit the red, he's still on for the black though. Really wanted that to screw back, but as it is, it's okay. Naps in, yes it does, so not an ideal shot on the black, but he, but he makes it. So Dean Garnett, 1-0 ahead in this 
fifth in deciding set. So now that two and a half hours have been played in this match, we will go to a 20 second shot clock with one 20 second extension allowed per game. So, oh, um, Dean. So, yeah, there's a bit of speed pull element here, but it's similar in this respect to the Taom shootout. Well, actually, no, sorry, the 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 um, ultimate pole played in the UK. So you get 30 seconds of sh shot clock to start with. It. No, that is the tail shootout, sorry. You start off with a um, 30 second shot clock and then it goes to 15 seconds as the match progresses. Ugly yellows here, we might might be a plant on though. It's played it in a nice controlled way to leave the cue ball down this end so Dean doesn't really have much to play at. The referee's gonna have to be onto this too to be calling the show, calling time because you've only got twenty seconds, so you do have to be very much onto it with the what shot you're going to play whereas when you had a 30 second shot clock it was a bit easier and this will be new for the players too because they would have been used to playing if they were being timed to a 30 second shot clock that's what they have in CNZ and it's not widely enforced so he's asked for an extension the, the shot clock doesn't come up on the screen, by the way, which is a bit of a shame, but that's okay. We can give you an idea. Bang. I think I heard the pocket go ouch there. You're still not in good position on this yellow top left of your screen. But he's given that backspin and then some but look where he's left the, the black mind you the, the black is still on though go into two pockets at least that I can see oh, he's ended up running into the red zone so not from where he is is he going to play a deflection here Double, just away. Over to you, Dean. Now you also see, I reckon, more attacking pull with the 20-second shot clock. But with Dean, of course, he oh, he's gotten that horribly wrong. Dear, oh dear, he didn't want the second kiss. Careful. Careful, it's okay, it's okay. Just about to have a Baden Jackson moment there on that black, but one game apiece, two sets apiece. But yeah, I was saying, heard Alex saying before about how having a 20 second shot clock will play more into Healy's game. I think Healy's a by trade a quicker player. So he won't be affected as much by only having 20 seconds legally to play a shot. Whereas for Dean he likes to, he's not a slow player, but he likes to deliberate a bit more. And also if he's having to play safeties as well, which fits more into his natural game, then he's going to have to look harder at exactly what he needs to leave. So. That's why I think having a 20 second shot clock is going to suit Healy better. 
Who won over so Simon currently two games to one up over Baden Jackson, still the first set. Plant shot. Love the way this boy plays, he just he's not scared of it. Most people would look at that and say, hell no, for a first shot. But Healy's one of the very few people who says, hell yes, for that shot. Hello, Mr. Southwest. I take it you're talking about the shot that Healy played on the black camellia. As he goes and puts another lovely plant in, so your garden's starting to get some life. Yeah, you're a bit like um, Tara Jackson, Camellia. You're ready to ride your partner if he makes a mistake. You say how nervous it makes some people, and then obviously you start yelling out, What'd you play that stupid shot for? Just a bit of screw, didn't need much. Controlled that quite well because the compulsion is to screw that quite heavily. Oh, strapped it. Beautiful pause on the black too. Just for the hill. Yes, indeed. Oh, this is looking more and more ominous for not only Dean Garnett but whoever Healy has to play next. <coughs> this is the free-flowing Healy we love. It is indeed John and obviously you go out to the players and say well Jesus you make it look so easy but I can assure you that they feel things as well. So two games to one, two sets to two. That was very nearly a foul break. Had it not gotten a little kiss off the other ball, it would have been a foul break. When he's warm, yeah. When, when he's lukewarm, he's dangerous, don't know. He's more, more than warm at the moment now. He's fierce simmering. Didn't quite get the split that he would have liked on the the yellow there, but the yellow will still go in what looks like the top left pocket. Could come across table off this and get a split on the other yellow that's tied up. She does. Unfortunately doesn't leave himself a shot on said yellow. I'm not too sure why that comment that you just made was had a question mark beside it, Camellia. It seemed fine to me. What a cut, but he's gone and off. I'm seeing the full array of shots there, but the corner pocket just decided nope. I'm going to jump in and save it. Just to remind you all as well that. That was a free shot, by the way, so it didn't matter that he missed it. If Dean ends up winning this, then we will go to a black ball shootout. So, oh, he can't make the plant. But it might not be so bad. He's not left Healy a lot here, but we've said that before, and Healy's managed to make something out of very little... When does Neil Wally play next? He plays at 7.30. That's a bit fine. 
So, um, yeah, Neil Wally plays against the loser of Des Wilcox and Adam Lilly, so that'll be another amazing game to wet your whistle. And that will be on Alex Alex Stones' stream, so if you wish to watch the Wallcat play inside New Zealand poll and just have a look at the stream from there. And also we've got at 7.30 there's another mouth-watering match for you is Adam Shaw versus the loser of Simon Singleton and Baden Jackson and that will be on this streaming table so you thought you had it good at the Nationals watching spectacular pool. Well, that w that ain't nothing. Just like what Michael Jackson always used to say, you ain't seen nothing yet. Imagine as well as the players start to warm up too, that the pool will only get better. As good as the pool's been right now, but scary to think that it could get even better. Good little slice there from Dean now. Uh, can he pot this red next to the yellow? Does it go in? If it doesn't go in naturally, you might be able to throw it in with a bit of right hand side. Only just now realising that he's got the clock on him. Goes for the corner instead, and very nearly made it in the corner. So he might be feeling a bit of pressure from playing under the time clock. It does, but what you might need to do, Tara, is expand your screen, or maybe have a look on your computer. Are you watching this through your phone? Uh, two, one, one. B -b 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 baby, you just ain't seen nothing yet. That song, you mean? Black for the win to cap off an amazing match. Yes. What a game, Healy White, after being two sets to one down, wins and goes through to, I believe, the winner's qualification match. But that was a brilliant game. He'll play the winner of Adam and Dez. Okay, let's have a look Adam Lilly and Liz Wilkins. Don't run away. So, so please go absolutely nowhere because the next game to be shown on the streaming table is Adam Lilly versus Des Wilcox. Great mates, both used to play for the same club. Des still does play for New Plymouth, whereas Adam has since moved to Christchurch. Both absolutely brilliant cueists. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, Healy did go up another gear in that last set. And Dean just was unable to match him. And also, dare I say it, the introduction of the 20-second shot clock, I think, didn't help Dean either. Because it didn't really suit his game as much. But Dean, is, he's not out of it, though. Dean will play on. He plays the winner of Brent Wells and Michael Hayes. That game currently, Michael Hayes is up one set to nil and two games to one. Yeah, if you're if you're watching on a a phone, Tara, then I, I don't know because I haven't seen, but it may not come up with the the game score. 
if you're watching on your computer then you may be able to have the window open enough to see the actual game scores as well because that's that's what we discovered we discovered that if we if we thin the window down on one part of the screen and expand the window for the Q score that we could actually see the games and the sets so in not too long a time we will have Des Wilcox, Adam Lilly for you I'm just going to go get myself a drink while all the excitement washes over Here we go, guys. What a great match we've got to look forward to. Lightning, Adam Lilly versus The Wiz, Des Wilcox. Des, the newly crowned national champion from two weeks ago at the Richmond Club. see a repeat of the great sudden knockout battle from 2020. Des went 14-5 up over Adam. Well, Adam pulled it back to 13-14 and then missed the sitter into the middle bag and Des managed to drag himself over the line. What a match that was. One of the the all-time great New Zealand pool matches.
don't forget we are still on the winner's side. So if either of these players was to lose this match, they would have another life. They'd actually go straight back on after this match, so no rest for the wicked. So Adam Lilly versus Diz Wilcox. Ooh, cue ball, Jesus. Imagine that so early in the match. You do that and then... Incoming player with a free shot, but... Stayed up. Adam will feel like he's got a real point to prove here. He got to the quarterfinals of the Nationals, but he would have been... I think he would have been really disappointed with that. See himself as better than that, and... As brilliant a player as he is, and... <coughs> you do, in many respects, feel that the best is, a, is ahead of him still, so... For him, he'd feel that would begin right here and now against the current New Zealand Super League champion in Des Wilcox. We saw any of that two weeks ago. That was played magnificently in that tournament. Been doing a bit of practice as well for this one. Also a bit of surprise result for some at the moment will be Michael Hayes being two sets to nil up over Brent Wells. Now, Brent's obviously been playing a bit more than Mike has recently, but Mike has been putting a bit of time in. Adam plays a skill shot there to remove the yellow. Good to see Mike playing, actually. I think there'd be quite a few people who think that he doesn't deserve to be in this tournament, but he is a founding member of the Super League. He was one of the players who, or sorry, rather one of the people who pushed so hard for this to be accepted in New Zealand, so starting obviously in Canterbury with Brad Campbell and Peter Mortensen and there's a bunch of other p people as well involved in that and now the baton has sort of been passed to the New, Z New Zealand Pool Promotions crew in many senses plus guys like Kerry Michaelides and Shane Brecken also doing some work that you don't really see. So he is a he's a guy who's done so much for this form of the game and so I'm I'm actually happy that he's actually he's been included in this. Oh, just about got the clip on the red, but it's still there. And also, if you heard his commentary with me on the Nationals tournament two weeks ago, then you will you will know how knowledgeable he is around this game and also around the the state of this game in New Zealand because he's he's in the thick of it. And he's he's an absolute fountain of knowledge when it comes to this game and how to play it. He's played a fair bit of it. He's obviously taking a back seat doing administration and promoting the game so to speak rather than actually playing it. But now he actually gets to play the game as well. Not surprising that Des put Adam in a snooker there, right behind the yellow to Des hopes at least to 
take the one cushion escape away. Could still come one rail if he puts a whack of left on it. No, he's alright. Got lucky off the jaw, but sometimes you need that. Thought for a moment that was going to go wide, but exactly what he wants. So it is looking. Oh, yuck! Oh, that's a fantastic snooker, and Adam taps the table in appreciation. That is pure filth in the best possible way. One, two. Looking like three rails here. Long rail, bulk rail, and then back to the the head rail here. So go to your left of your screen, top of your screen, bottom of your screen. One, two, three. Great escape and a great leave to boot. And Des taps the table to say great shot. Mentioned how great mates as well. And obviously, grew up playing pool together. Um, played pairs together as well. There's their flicking the yellow away to leave Adam no shot on the red and. Probably wanted to promote that second yellow a little bit more than he did, but overall he'll be happy with the result there. And the main goal there was to not leave an easy shot on the, the red, which he's done. But they actually played a few pairs tournaments together as well. I still remember the the national Clubs New Zealand national pairs that they played in, in 2013 at their home club at the time, New Plymouth. Um, it was 2013, Adam was only Adam was only 15 back then and um, Des had just turned um, sorry, Des was Des, Des had just turned 19 and they got all the way to the semi-finals in that tournament. So I've got history, these two guys, and you think nine years ago they were playing pairs with each other. And to think that they're only 24 and 28 respectively. And that Des is a two-time North Island champion and a... And a um, Super League Nationals champion. And that Adam is a Super League champion in Canterbury, as well as a, a past South Island champion. That was an amazing shot that Des just played over all of that waffle. Stopped in his tracks to have a look at that yellow again next to the black. Uh, when is Stumpy on? He's actually playing right now, Christine. If you go to Q Score and look up Champion of Champions. Actually, if you go on to Inside New Zealand Poll on Facebook, type in Inside New Zealand Poll, then that Stumpy's game's actually being streamed, streamed live on that channel. So if you wish to watch that. So I think he might have gotten behind the eight here. But if you wish to watch that game, which I'm sure you do, then go onto that Facebook channel and go from there. Fuming at the fact that he's ended up behind the eight here. He's going to have to try and swerve this. 
Yeah, too much. Too much snow. The reason that Adam waved his hand over the ball there was to see if it was actually touching the rail or not. Because that affects how he hits it. Hmm. It's a sort of a punchy s type shot there, but he must not have played through it properly. See how the ball sort of s jawed and then just stayed there. Long cut for Dez. He's actually overcut it, so. That's how well he's seeing that cut, the cuts right now. You see them well when you overcut them. It's a bit simpler for Adam, and he gets it. So black into the center pocket. Down she goes. So first game to Adam Lilly in this very first set. There's a number of his teammates from the Black Pearl are also in attendance so if you hear what sounds like a pirate's R, that'll be in support of Adam. Currently Stumpy is one set to nil ahead of KD Singh. thing that Dez was struggling with slightly in the Nationals, about the only thing he was struggling with really is his, was his break. Number of in-offs on the break which as we've mentioned quite a few times is near criminal in these rules. Oh that hit the rail well before it should have. Didn't look likely, did it? He's must not be queuing 100% straight. Um, that shot looked straight, so all he had to do was kill it straight. Must have just put a little bit of unintentional side on that ball. There's gleefully accepts the opportunity to be on yellows. Might be able to make the black more on here. Oh, he takes a plant. Okay, I thought he was looking at the the cut on the yellow into the middle, but obviously not. And now this represents an opportunity if he takes the yellow to the right to just push that yellow off the rail. I think he's more looking at that yellow to go down that long rail because of the red being there. Well, that's what I thought he was looking at anyway, but he's actually ended up quite nicely on it for the pocket bottom right. And he struggled down the rail as well. I've seen a few times actually players not coming to grips with shots close to or down the rails and both of these guys usually excellent down the rails I mean, Adam especially, I've watched him a number of times slot some lovely balls down rails and obviously it's a slightly different game with a small cue ball if your queuing's not 100% as well you small cue ball throws you off more Runs through beautifully for the second red. I just wonder whether he might be a bit straight here, actually. Is it big top through or big screw back? Big top through. Look at the Q power. 
When Healy White, you have a competitor. It's usually so difficult to get lots of top throw on shots with a small cue ball, but Adam and Healy just make it look so easy. Just pure crispness of timing. And then the touch to go with it. So the red down or close to that rail that's in bulk there, that'll be last. It'll be nice and straight, or relatively straight on it. Now this line here is a bit tricky because of the yellow in the middle of the table. If you can maybe put a little bit of right on it to swing wide of it. Yeah, just like this, but he needed more drawer. Needed more drawer. That was more stun, less draw, and that's the reason why it faded off into the into the pocket. Ideally, wanted that to sort of sort of snap diagonally towards the the centre of the table, just enough to clear that yellow. So this is pretty much bang on for Dez, it just needs a wee bit of screw. I want the black the same side of the table as the last potted ball. Down she goes, so one game apiece. So Simon Singleton at the moment is one set to nil ahead of Baden Jackson and two games to one ahead. Stephen Alderson one set ahead of set to nil ahead of Katie Singh, but Katie Singh has a one nil game advantage in that second set. And Michael Hayes, two sets to nil ahead of Brent Wells, but one game apiece in the third set. Oof. Didn't want the black to go down because that would have meant he'd have to re-break it. We saw what happened was, I think it was Baden's break and his game against Brent Wells about how he potted the black off the break so it's a re-rack, potted about two other balls as well and then in the re-rack he actually went and off the break so just definitely don't want to have to re-rack them when you hit them so well. Just need to get on this red that's blocked by the black. you can do if he stops just about there. Middle pockets are always viable, remember. And he would have been watching enough of this table to know that there is a little bit of a little bit of nap into that near jaw. So take that as you wish. Yeah, well, this is truly is ABC stuff. This this is clearing a table made look easy. Two one Adam Lilly in games. As we see the smattering of the crowd in attendance, and Simon Singleton off top right of you. Your screen playing against Baden Jackson. So back to the the main screen. There's Wilcox looking to answer 
what Adam has just done is break and clear, but it's a dry break, so it could be very well sat in a seat for another frame. Balls look pretty nice here, both sets, and you'd probably favour the yellows just looking at them here, but there's not really an easy yellow on, so you won't be too disappointed to be taking reds, I'd imagine. Look to just drop this red in the centre of table here to go past the red in bulk. Whoops. Something he didn't like there with that. You saw him stand up very, very quickly after he played the shot. So Des has got very much the same looking table here. Yellows are all looking delicious. He just needs to piece it together. Yeah, not often you see Adam Lilly fall off a shot like that. It's rare occurrence, but when it does happen, then you tend to make a song and dance about it. Just to come out past bulk. Yep. It's pretty much perfect. Didn't need to get far past bulk, he just needed a, enough of a, a shot on this yellow to make it worthwhile. Gives himself the choice here. To venture to say he'll be looking at the yellow on the left. Because it'll be a bit easier to squeeze past the black, but Taking the yellow on the right, taking the rail rather than screwing back, so using the angle quite nicely there to get get natural run off the rail. We screw shot, so this black to get it to two games each. And indeed, so pretty facile looking finish there from Dez, although Adam will disagree and say he should have done it himself. But that is to be expected if you miss early in the frame and it's an open sort of frame. <coughs> so two games apiece now. This one crucial for the first set. Yeah, dead right. And Paul's just saying about how this is a nice fast game. Well, we saw one that lasted a bit longer for for reasons, but this game between two of the quicker players on the circuit, he's not nicknamed Adam Lightning Lily for nothing. Des Wilcox can most certainly play at a decent clip. Michael Hayes now on the hill against Brent Wells. Two sets to nil ahead, and now two games to one ahead. Adam looks to jump straight back into his work here. Looking to put the disappointment of the previous frame behind him. No, it stopped short. It just sort of checked up off the rail. It Needed it to roll a lot further than it did. This is going to be difficult to get back on. Need that to stop. So, ooh, one, one hard, one soft. Now this gets extremely awkward having to bridge over the red. He's also got no guarantee that he's actually going to be on either of these two yellows. 
had to play it with some pace to try and get the cue ball back across table and as a result he's missed it. It's not the easiest of starters here for Dez. He's got the red sort of centre of table to take to the centre right pocket. Looks like he's dialing long distance, so he's having to really trust the table on that. Just try to put the red in the way so that Adam's got something to think about here. That that yellow that's sort of level with the black spot might very well go into the top corner pocket there on your screen. If it does, I'm pretty sure Adam would want to know about that. No shot clock in the game just yet. So you can take your time on these. He's going to take this to the top left pocket here by the look of it. No, double. Got it! I think he was trying to play that off the other yellow, but he ended up getting it in straight. And this yellow doesn't look on from here, but may very well be able to still put it in front. If there's any way he can get around for the yellow, I don't think the angles are quite lining up for it though. Unless he puts a whack of right on it. And he's overcut it, he was trying to put a whole bunch of side on it to get it down the other end, this end of the table. So the, the red that's to the left of centre on the table there represents a good opportunity for Des to use to break that other red away. You can also use this one that he's aiming at now, bottom right of your screen, to, to get the cue ball up the rail and promote the second red. So that to sit over the hole for a bit of security. Hmm. Bit of a Adam's at a bit of a crossroads here because he knows that this this yellow is on, but. He also knows that there's not a hell of a lot to play after it. He's going to have a go at it, at least see if he can get it near a pocket to put a bit of pressure on Dez here. There's Dez there tapping the table to appreciate the, the effort, so you look at, look at the way the table lies at the moment, it's, especially with the cue ball being left where it was, and Adam did a brilliant job of leaving it there. He was trying to get a snooker behind that second red and he didn't get it, so Adam might be half a chance here to get a split. Looks like he's going to go for a double here though. A double for a plant on that second yellow. Oh, terrific shot, but he didn't want the second one. That's so unlucky, that would absolutely rip your underwear.
Just when you th thought this game couldn't get any more crawl. He wouldn't, surely he wouldn't look for a swerve. Oh, he's, no he's not. I think he's just looking to play top rail. Top rail with a bit of swerve, does he get a bit of luck? No. Had a chance, maybe if it had more pace, but it's neither here nor there. Oh, that that hurts, man. It was such a good shot too. Such a brilliant double to to even give himself a shot. Oh, touched it onto the rail. Could very well play this ball down the rail now if he really wants to. It's just a bit of a conundrum here. Do you play the one down the rail or do you play the, the one over the pocket? Because the one down the rail would, if you get it, that's a massive, massive ball. That's the only difficult ball on the table. I, I'll just pin your ears back and play it, Desi. He's just got to pin his ears back here. But he's oh, rubbish, though. He's just he's been struggling down the rails this whole game. It's almost like a game. He, he knew it was a shot he had to play, but he, he didn't want to play it. In the end it was that person on his shoulder saying, you've got to play the shot. This is for the, the set. No. That's not even close either. Nothing really doing on the left side of the table though for for Dez, but he can, he can cut this first red into the, the middle though. So one thing that Adam did actually do well was he made that left side of the table harder. But that's an excellent first shot from Dez. He's gone and basically taken that all away there. So he just needs a, needs a screw back here and needs to get handily on one of these reds. I think you want to be a wee bit more handy than that, but... Make it work. That sort of line there is what he wants for the black. Is that similar to the, the sort of line that he's got now. Yeah, just like that. Perfect. Excellent pause. You want him for places to play. Put the white ball, that's about bang on. And yes indeed, gets the eight. So one set to nil, there's Wilcox over Adam Lilly. So often how those missed blacks come to haunt see if that one comes to bite Adam where it hurts the most. There's to start us off in the second set. Oh, and again the cue ball nearly going in off. It's going to happen eventually, Des. You're not going to have the, something to help you. Just has to watch so much with that with that cue balls going. Two of my good mates playing here. I'm going, Des. Oh, not surprised, Ryan. You do currently live in the same place as him. Yeah, I think Adam's mates with a lot of people, though. 
as well as Diz, they're both incredibly popular players, very popular people too. One thing to be a champion player, but it's uh, quite another to be a champion person. And both of these guys have champion player, are champion players and champion people. Played. He just had to use that red ever so slightly to redirect the yellow into the pocket and got the good subtlety there to not hit the yellow to uh, the red too fat. So we've gone to a deciding game in the third set between Mike Hayes and Brent Wells. That's now two each in terms of games and Mike of course has a two set to nil lead he did his breaking by and large was pretty good Ryan but what I did notice a few times was the number of times he did going off the break he probably more than he would have liked and he's done it, he's flirted with it on a number of occasions here, he's just maybe putting too much on his break and sort of spraying off the side of the apex ball slightly. Use the yellow quite nicely there, uh, sorry the red nicely there to to stop the cue ball. Now nicely back for the black, so this will be first game to Des if this drops. And indeed down it goes, so Des Wilcox, one set to the good and now one game to the good. I think what we need more, Mr. Wonderful, is somebody to commentate with me. Had that before and unfortunately then they had to go off and play and as a result we've ended up just with myself on my lonesome again. But that's all good. I'll do it solo for as long as possible. Yeah, well, I, I remember Des when he was um, 12 years old and playing in the playing in the Allen, sorry, not the Allen Cowan Memorial, in the um, Laverne Easter Classic. I think he got all the way to the plate final in that particular tournament where um, Jeff Bollis beat him, but one thing that Jeff did say is that look out for this young man in the future because he's going to be a force, or words to that effect, and boy has that, has a statement not been ever more correct. certainly has turned into a player to watch, as has this young man at the table currently. Breaks the yellow away and it's exactly what he was aiming to do, but he's not gotten very good position off the rest of his yellows from it, which seems to be the big thing that's biting him at the moment. Get the lovely split and then not able to really get position on the next shot. Well, that's excellently played. He, he didn't want the second one to go in again. This time it has acquiesced and sat over the pocket. Big issue now for Adam's going to be the one that's just past the middle pocket.
Yeah, that, <laughs> you did right, Toddy. Oh, very nearly got it out. I think he's actually pushed, pushed the black worse than it was. Um... Oh, and within your group. Okay. Um, he, Des was 12 back then, John. <laughs> and you did right as well with your next comment. Big, big ups must go to Kelvin Dunlop for his... the way that he's taught the youngsters in the New Plymouth area to play. He, his input in the game there has been legendary. It's just not so much teaching them how to play the game, but teaching them how to conduct themselves on the table. So you've got other people around the area who can teach a person how to play pole, but Calvin absolutely instrumental in teaching the players how to conduct themselves. Like, don't get sulky, don't cry, don't don't throw your toys, just respect the game, respect the opponent, that sort of thing that you get, hopefully that gets drilled into juniors at a young age. And something that clearly I needed drilled into me when I was a junior. It's a good little layup there from Dez. The big thing from there for that, for Des, was just to put some thought into Adam's head and just challenge Adam as to what he really wants to do here. I mean, ideally, what Adam would love to do here is to free that black from its prison. But also, you've got that yellow that's on the rail that's ugly, and quite possibly you'll need to be taking taking them one at a time rather than trying to really do too much on one shot and risking fouling. So Adam just bringing the red, out, the yellow out into centre table here, um, which I do like. I mean he's obviously decided well it's not worth trying to do too much on this, I'll just bring the hard ball out. So now I've got another ball that I can actually use to maybe get the black out. See, Des has just gone and covered any possibility that the black will go in that pocket. What he's done here for Adam, he might have left him a wee angle for this, this shot though. Well, no he hasn't, but Adam might decide to have a go at it now. He hasn't quite put that yellow over the bag as he would have liked. He's given Blake some coaching as well, so Blake Bernard's another name to watch for the future. It's great to have, see him have his own Facebook page as well, He's putting himself out there. Oh, where's this going? Okay into that cluster there, so what he's done there with Dez's reds is he's made it so much harder for Dez to try and wedge a, a red in there. He left a gap with the yellow near the pocket but he's gone and closed it down by making the other reds not playable into that corner pocket. Yeah, I know you guys would have had some mean playing sessions together. Just using the opportunity to do what he did a few shots ago was Adam just to chip the, the yellow out, out of trouble. I just wonder if Des risks it all here. I don't... I wouldn't imagine he would do because that 
plan looks like it could be on, but at the very least to bring a ball out like he has done. So just trying to trying to keep the pressure on Adam as much as he can here. I know that there's still it's potentially only one mistake away from Des having another pop at this frame. be able to play this off the rail or if he's got enough angle that he can make but the double is very much on too here with with where the reds ended up the other side of the pocket it makes that pocket a little bit bigger oh, he's missed it he's he's actually missed it to the opposite side of the pocket so once again he'll be sort of groaning to himself that he's let a big chance slide by. Makes that fall. I wonder if you might be able to cheat the the angle here just to hit the right hand side of the red as we see it and go out for the second red here. Oh, he tried to put a snooker in I think. He might have left Adam a shot here you know. He's trying to just put him in behind the the red that's just away from it. Corner, corner. Oh, just about. I'm trying for the corner or the middle and any pocket with open arms, really. But Des has just got three balls in the black to go here and... You'd have to think there'd be a plant coming up at some point. Unless he can work around that yellow, the red that's not over the pocket, then... Otherwise it would have been a plant, but you can just screw straight back like that, he doesn't need to. Good wait. Hey. Jeez, same. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, a little bit. So, two games to nil. Des Wilcox currently leading Adam Lilly in the second set. So, Simon Singleton has beaten Baden Jackson three sets to nil, which is a bit of a surprise result, really. You knew how, know how good Simon Singleton is, but. But Baden Jackson had the better of him the last time those two played. But this time Simon gets his revenge. And Michael Hayes has actually beaten Brent Wells 3 0. So Mike progresses on, and Brent Wells unfortunately is out. Yeah, I lost 3 1, 3 2, 3 1. Probably missed two balls that I shouldn't miss, and that was it. You played very well. You played very well. You played right back and win it easy. There you go. So you're Baden just, just talking to us about how well Simon was playing and saying that if Simon plays that same way, throughout this tournament he'll go on and win it so quite a possibility that Simon could be getting back to his best on the the reds and yellows here which is ominous sign for everybody because at, a, at, his, at his best or anywhere near his best Simon Singleton you still have to consider him the best reds and yellows players, player in New Zealand 
Obviously, Dizzy Wilcox holds that distinction at the moment, being the national champion, but he's still got to think that he has to do a little bit more to actually take that tag off Simon at the moment. Plants on here. Might have to put a little bit of side on this first ball and ooh. Well it was on, he just very, very nearly potted it. It just about could have used that red as well to help the yellow funnel in. Just unfortunately have to go for a moment, but I'll be straight back.
going back to the table here after being away and what has happened here Adam very much had that frame well I wouldn't say sewn up but he was in the ascendancy and now look at it relatively simple looking finish here for Des to win this frame, win the set and then he'd be two sets to nil ahead So gets himself nicely down the table here. He's got the choice of those two reds on the right hand side of the table. <coughs> if he can manage to get himself on the red to the red on the left, ideally now, then he can just do the zigzag pattern and it would be a hell of a lot easier than having to get position off the black from this red so that's why he's taken that red now because this is so much easier to hold a cue ball for it's pocket weighted come out nicely for the black so two sets to nil beckons here just this black standing between Dez and that, so Adam's got it all to do now, he's, for all the good things he's done, he's two sets to nil down and you see he's starting to get a little bit desperate about now, he really, Hi John. hello Simon, Braden was saying that he played really well in that last game. 80%. <laughs> that was a pretty good match, pretty pretty decent standard. Only a couple of mistakes here and there. Can you please pass me my potty? Yep, you cold? Yeah, it's a bit I'll cold. wrap it around you, pal. How about that? Look at that. There you go. <laughs> oh, look at that break. There's a bit of anger in there. Adam would be not best pleased at being two sets to nil down, so he absolutely unloads on the pack. And takes the reds. Big reason for that being is that the black is covered by a red. So, and the fact that also the rest of the reds are relatively well on. There's a couple of them near rails, but... They shouldn't phase at him too much. Seen before about generally how good he is at playing down the rail. So right now he only really needs one of them. Got himself onto the red that's covering the black. If he wishes to take it now, I'll just leave it for last though. Close down for the red near the rail. Also, when you get position as well as Adam can, you don't necessarily need to to be afraid of the balls near rails because you, if you get slightly under them like that, it just becomes so much easier. If he's on this, this last red, which I think he is, then all he needs to do is put a big screw back in. Oh, we tried to tried to put it in with the side, so... Quite possibly he couldn't see enough of it to pot it and The side was just to sort of throw it in. So it could very well have been a case that he wasn't, didn't get the position that he was after and he didn't quite get on the ball so he had to kind of make a shot out of it. All going on about how easy that looked and then 
the ball that could have caused some problems ended up doing so. Rattles and falls. We'll be looking for a similar sort of angle on this yellow to the middle here. That will do as well, just has to drop it in pocket weight. Be nicely on the ass yellow. Oh. Bit too cute there. So he's got a choice here. He's going to have to either play a safety or he's going to have a go at it. Yeah, that didn't surprise me at all. I don't know if he's quite gotten the snooker though. I think he needed to hit more of the red for that to be a, a snooker. Still an awkward shot and Dez has actually made that look incredibly easy. He's having to bridge over the ball plus the fact that he had to flick off the second yellow for the pocket. He played that nicely as well. Just, just got enough on that to make the black easy. Down the rail makes it fit. So, first game to Des Wilcox in the third set. Big break there from Dez and looks like it's gone dry though so Adam qu very quickly leaping to his feet. So quickly on to the reds is Adam and the red that's closest to the bulk line is going to be one that he needs to be careful of. So he might be able to actually get a shot on that red after this one if he can... If he's just got enough angle on this first one to the left then he can coast over naturally for the the difficult one in the middle pocket, or even for a double. It's looking more and more like a double here for Adam. He's got to watch that the cue ball doesn't get in the way here. It looks reasonably straight. Oh, he missed it. Good enterprise, but again, it just comes up short. It looked the whole time like he was playing for a double, but was just unable to make it fit when it counted, and that's really been the story of his game. Do all the right things, but not getting the right result because something's gone wrong. table nicely for the yellow near the bulk line so might even be able to use this to get onto the yellow that's near the rail or to get himself a good shot on it as he has done instead 
playing in behind the red to to jam it in there. So didn't like the idea of playing the ball down the rail. That's about the only real weakness he's had all game is is play down the rails. He's aware of that, so he just. Plays nicely to leave Adam there. It just makes the rail. A quarter of a roll less and that would have been a foul, but just tapping the table. There's an appreciation for the shot there. Left it right on the rail too, so... Looks like a relatively easy long shot, but they never are. But Des has just made that look easy. Fortunately for Des, he's ended up putting the red over the pocket, so... This throws an extra cat amongst the pigeons. No. Just struggling on those, isn't he? Even he knew he had to play it too, so there wouldn't have been any notion of shirking the shot. Maybe when he goes away to have a practice, I'm pretty sure that that's the first thing he's going to be practicing is his rail shots or shots where he's close to the rail because. As I said before, that's about his only genuine weakness in this match. Everything else he's been really good with, his, his break has actually improved. The rest of his potting's been great. That's better from Adam, that's more like it in terms of positional play. Needs to keep continuing to go on with it. Let's come off the top rail here. And this time he's nice and in position for the black. And down it goes with a flourish. So Adam Lilly gets a game in the set. So it's one each. Game between Steve Alderson and Katie Singh is one set apiece and one game apiece. So apart from this particular match, that's the only other game to be played in this round. And then you will have five more, four more games to be played today. That's the loser round two. So the loser of this game will play against Neil Wally, whereas the winner of this game will play against Healy White in the winner's qualification. So the winner of the game between Steve Alderson and KD Singh will end up playing against Des Blair in the loser round two. Nudge the black out nicely there. Just looking at that red that's next to the yellow, just in the, towards the middle of the table there. I suggest he pots this red here and then he can get back around for it at some stage. Needs this to keep tracking. Jeez, that seemed to have an affinity for that yellow. It was almost as if the yellow had a magnetic field on it and it sucked the cue ball in. Cueing between the two balls. Oh dear. Yeah, that's. you say it's not an easy shot, but Adam won't use that as an excuse at all. 
because you are going to see plenty of those in this format, especially with a small cue ball. pick the yellow off the rail and still don't quite think that yellow that's next to the red is on because well at least not in the po pocket other than the top right one and it could very well come off the rail and be on that yellow here move the red did he move it out the way or did he move it in the way I'm not a hundred percent sure just yet They are both on in different pockets, but he doesn't really have the angle on this yellow to get a very good shot on it. It'll probably be the one more center of the table that he'll be playing next after this. So that, that's your position there. He's got a little angle to screw off to just touch the black, then, uh, sorry, to just touch the red next to it, that would be fantastic for position. Oh, he's ended up hard on it though. If that red had just separated, yeah, that's, that's what'll be ripping his undies there, is all it had to do was separate from that and that yellow was on. Adam would have thought for a moment that he was going to get another shot there, but Des very quickly slammed the door on that idea. Needs to avoid all the traffic here. He might just take his medicine and just pop this quietly. If he does end up somewhere near that red that he just pointed to, then if he gets it ever so slightly wrong, he could just as well end up behind it. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes the risk though. He took the risk, he got a little bit closer. And he is on for this shot now. Now he needs a bit of cue power to really get his, his cue ball away from the two reds. Oh, Jaws goes in the other pocket. When things are going your way, they really do. They just come in floods. We say to hold all tickets until the balls stop rolling. Is there any justice? No, there is no justice. Smashes the black in as well, so... Two games to nil, two sets to nil, he's on the hill. And that probably more than any other frame will hurt for, for Adam. The number of frames that he has had and he has ended up not winning. I think that'll be the one that hurts the most because he Lost to what was essentially a, a slightly fluky shot. Go. 
correct now, is it? Oh, here we go. So 2-1 Surrey games to Diz. Um, Lister got the sets right. I'm not the usual scorer, so... Thankfully, we've got people who actually know what the score is. Well, that's a really good starter from Adam here. He absolutely needs them to start going his way here because not much else in this match has. He might be slightly out of position again here. See that lovely bit of side that he put on that ball. I don't think it was on normally, but that bit of side just threw it into the pocket and then he used it nicely for position. It's maybe not quite what he was after, but it's okay. Very much a touch sort of shot, this. Now he can come across the table and try to get the black out. This is not an easy shot though. So big this is. If he can execute this. He's just looked to put it over the hole, has he? Or was he trying to pot it and he thought the black was on off the yellow, the, the red? We'll never know. I just feel it was a wee bit anticlimactic there. I was expecting him to have a, a dash at that. Wouldn't be surprised if Des looks to lock him in a snooker here. Maybe not off this shot or the next shot, but as you go back down the table where it's a bit easier. Nice and simple up to this point. Still keeps it that way. I reckon it's this yellow. The, I reckon it's this red on the, the head rail here. Play that half ball and sit the cue ball smack bang behind the other red. He's looking at it now, he needs to get his weight right of course, but by and large his weight control has been very good in this game. Oh, he ground into it though, hit the ball too full. I think this is on, he, whether he needs to swerve it or not, I believe he can see it. on for a double, will it squeeze in off the red? Double, no! It's nothing but, nothing but a full send on that, but couldn't quite find the pocket. Des will mind the fact that he's missed that too much. The leave was more important than what he potted. And this is why it's so... The game gets so difficult after you've missed the black. Oh, he didn't want to kiss those on. Dear, oh dear, he's absolutely fuming. <laughs> It's the only, absolutely only thing he did not want to do besides fouls. Kiss those reds on. Because the way they were sitting, that was the only real buffer for him. This just needs to piece it together here. 
I'm going to screw back because I'd say want to... I was about to say it would need more of a cut than anything on this plant. Keep the white ball away from the second red. It is a cut anyway and he's controlled that quite beautifully. But yeah, the, the reaction from Adam after that shot just said it all really. Just had very little help help for himself in this match. Just needs a little screw back here to Dez and in prime position on the black. As he does, he's pretty well on it, so one more for the match to move into the winner's qualification. Yes indeed, Desi Wilcox. Three sets to nil over Adam Lilly. But Adam just he just couldn't get it going, really, could he? And Des, yes, he did play extremely well, but I don't think you'll find a game in which Adam just made so many little errors in position and the odd pot that didn't fall for him. It's a game that you, you generally don't see him do that too often, but it it's almost like it all seemed to happen in the one game there, and Against a guy like Des Wilcox in the form he's in, you just you will not get another opportunity at it. So a bit of a shame that the game was a that he couldn't quite put put up more of a fight there, but he will still remain in the tournament, albeit having to play against Neil Wally to stay in it. He just had absolutely yeah, nothing yeah. go for him. He's off this game a little bit and obviously he can capitalise on these rules. Though. Is that the Georgia one? Yeah, he did look as if he looked tense to begin with. Yeah, and he did look. And the guy started off flustered, so if he took the first set, the guy stole that first set. The, 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 the double where they both went in from then, it's yes. like flipped out. But no, you play, you've got to take chances, right? Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> got in this. Do you. We're just going back, we're just doing a, a wee post-mortem on that game and one of the things that we all pointed that I think Michael Hughes pointed to, Michael's just sitting next to me, was when Adam played the double to turn into a plant and he actually potted both balls and then he ended up not being on the black off that so obviously incredibly unlucky to be in that situation to begin with after playing such a good shot but after that it just kind of went downhill from there he he, ne he was never really able to recover from that so we will cut the stream after that we will cut the stream. The next game will be scheduled to start around seven, t between seven twenty and seven thirty. So I hope you guys have, guys and girls and non-binaries have enjoyed watching the matches so far. Um, Steve Alderson and Katie Singh are still going, by the way. Um, one set apiece and two, f two games apiece. Alex, Alex at the moment is trying to get that stream up and running because he is streaming that match. Um, so hopefully he can get it going for everyone who wants to watch that. I'll see you in oh, about 40 minutes or so time. And until then, hope you join back.